All right, welcome to tonight's live. Um, so today we have a special guest, Michelle is going to be joining us, Apostle Michelle. Uh, let me uh, bring her on here. All right, perfect. So Apostle Michelle, um, this is actually the first time we've done a live, although we have, uh, let me just turn my phone on silent. Although we have talked a lot um, over uh, Messenger and of course, uh, managing the fallen angels and Nephilim groups. Um, so why don't we start, why don't we start and if you could tell us a little bit about yourself um, and uh, just kind of your ministry and the things that the Lord has kind of uh, brought you into. Okay. Um, unbeknownst to me, I've been doing this kind of ministry yeah. since I was a little girl. I was adopted into a family that their only child was 15 years older than I am, had many, many multiple personalities and was deep uh -huh. in witchcraft. So I've been doing this basically my whole life. I just didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I've been through previous marriages where um, my children's dad yeah. is, um, he was an alcoholic, a Desert Storm veteran, and because of his alcoholism, he would invite demons in. Oh, wow. Would become possessed actually many times. And those are some very interesting stories in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gone to Bible college. I've had a varied life. I've been a mayor um, mm -hmm. for 30 years, roughly. I was a makeup artist for TV and film. And oh, okay. I would, I was probably the only one that you could know of at that time that would carry anointing oil in my makeup kit and would anoint the sets, pray over the sets and was working on the industry a long time ago. Oh, wow. Years ago, um, I became ordained under Joan Hunter Ministries mm -hmm. and roughly, oh, about that same time is when through praying medic, I met Steve Keeks Harmon. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was traveling with Mercy and anybody that knows Steve knows kind of that story. And they came to stay at my house for six days. Oh, wow. And during those six days, which kind of backtrack a little bit, they had never been able to stay at anybody's house for more than two days. Yeah. All the covens that were after them. Mm hmm. And I didn't know anything about SRA, satanic ritual abuse, um, yeah. dissociative identity disorder. I mean, I, I knew a little bit, but not really much of anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus told me that this was going to be my proving ground and my learning ground. Wow. So they showed up on Halloween night. Mm -hmm. which he expected that that's the worst night of the year for her. And yeah. it was just peace in the house. Jesus had already told me what to do to prepare my home, the around my home, below my home. And during that six days, the altars in her took turns popping up and saying, wow. Hey, Jesus wants you to know this now. No, it's my turn. Jesus wants you to know this. Wow. So it was, that was my training ground was six mm -hmm. intense days of saved altars that were teaching me. Wow. And, and so, um, Steve, just as some for background, Steve uh, is a deliverance minister. And at that time, he was working with a specific uh, SRA, satanic ritual abuse survivor, um, who had been, of course, through all sorts of rituals, uh, torment. Uh, and so basically, Michelle's just sharing how um, God aligned them and brought Steve and this girl into her home. And so what happened from that after that, learning a little bit about all of this? Um, the, learning about SRA, learning that I had angels all around me, learning all kinds of things, learning what um, gold dust and diamond dust does to witches and warlocks, which that's an interesting story. Yeah. Uh, it's like kryptonite. Mm -hmm. But amazing. Through, then Jesus started sending me simple cases. Yeah. And I don't mean to, to 
denigrate what it is. They, I mean, every one of them is horrific, but mm -hmm. I guess they less complicated cases. Yes. Yeah. To, to learn on. And yeah. then um, close to, well, six and a half years ago now, he sent me, which has been the biggest blessing in my life and, and the greatest honor was someone who had been promised to Abaddon as a bride. Yeah. Had, uh, I, we, we, we lost count at thousands of, uh, yeah. there was sort of children, there was altars, there was all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And we have worked through that and learned together. And that has grown to helping people across the, the world. I, um, like you do, you know, we, I, I don't take a lot of assignments unless God yeah. specifically tells me because yes, I'm exactly. still dealing with some of these and writing a manual to help people the, because the bride is, is clueless. Yeah. People. And there is so many people that not only need to, but that have soul fractures. Yeah. That's and so, I guess with a lot of these, the, the, the cases and, and your experience with, um, with deliverance, um, I mean, both of us, you know, the Lord has taught us over the years, um, but also connected very strategically people, right, in your path. Oh, and yeah, so, like, like Ginger, who just popped up, who's one of my partners in crime, mm -hmm. and we shut down portals. We shut down together with Jesus, the Scott Travis portal. Mm -hmm. um, but God aligns people up for yeah. his, he's, a, he's aligned us up. Mm -hmm. um, Ginger's been following you. She she travels a lot with her work. Um, yeah, but there, there, God is aligning people. Yeah, and I mean, I guess like when we're talking about portals, guys, a lot of the things that we kind of refer to is you know there can be external portals where it could be in the land because of whatever spells, iniquity, uh, sacrifices, and things that are done by agents of evil. Uh, and the kingdom of darkness, but also when we also refer to portals or gateways, we can also talk about internal realms, such as, for example, like your soul. And so when there are certain covenants or certain sins, drugs, uh, occult, um, you know, playing with the Ouija board, uh, what else? There's generational things as well that could be in the bloodline, covenants, right? So we also refer to these as like doorways or portals where there's the access for the kingdom of darkness. Um, to kind of come in or to manipulate or cause certain things in the natural realm, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and so, I don't Michelle, know if you have a chance to see the movie Nefari. Oh, I haven't yet. Although I've seen a lot of the trailers and some video clips. Yeah, I was able to watch it last week, and it was like if there was one of my clients or your clients sitting there, it was like, oh, I've heard that line before. Oh. Oh, well, I've heard that line before. Yeah. It, it is absolutely spot on. Yeah. The thing that they left out was the power of Jesus in it. Oh. Mm -hmm. But everything else is absolutely spot on. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times the, you know, I was thinking about it just the other day of uh, how many times have we had demons or fallen entities say, you don't know who you're messing with or you can't make me go. Those are all the textbook stuff that we deal with in mm -hmm. deliverance, right? And when we refer to deliverance, we're referring to exorcisms. Uh, Catholicism refers to them as exorcism. Typically with Christians, we refer to them as deliverance. A little bit nicer way to kind of say <laughs> casting out demons from people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of and, my favorite lines is, is when they say, like, again, you don't know who you're dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> then they call me particular names. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have to laugh because you know where they're getting ready to go. Yeah. And it's it's actually hilarious now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you know, the way that I look at it is typically demons uh, will operate as, think of them like criminals. Uh, and usually the ones who talk and divulge a lot of information, these are the lower level, the more 
kind of dumber ones. They're more mm -hmm. stupid in a sense. Um, but you will have the higher ranking ones that have more experience. Um, and usually the, the reason how they've kind of, I guess, gone into a different level is because of their assignments, but also when they were in the earth, what the things that they did, um, for example, like, um, there was this one time where it was a pre-flood Nephilim, right? And when we refer to Nephilim, we're referring to the, a lot of the hybrids and the giants that the Bible talks about in Genesis, um, Genesis 6, 4. And this one particular, um, demon Nephilim, um, basically began to share how, um, he was from the pre-flood world and he was a giant and he was a cannibal. He would, of course, eat people. Um, and so typically when you're dealing with different levels, they, you, you can usually discern, um, if they're lower level ones or if they're higher, because a lot of times the higher ones are more legalistic and they kind of know their rights in a sense, like as a criminal, they won't talk to us as like, we're like enforcing law as police officers in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. Can you, Michelle, can you share maybe a, a story of, I guess, your t like a, a demon maybe that you encountered or even a fallen angel in deliverance um, that whatever, how the Lord led you to kind of evict them or what was that, that conversation like in the course of interrogation? Some of them are quite humorous now. One of my very favorite ones is, this was a long time ago because I don't even usually deal with him now, but the one who was the cherub that, you know, was Lucifer that some people call Satan, but that's a whole nother issue of. <laughs> yeah, not the, quite the same entity. <laughs> also be the accuser, but I was yeah that particular entity and I'd already confronted him and some other people that week Yeah. and he looked at me and he goes and I'm not going to cuss here try, I'll try to say it the way he did he goes it's you the <laughs> effing Christ follower Yeah. and at first I was like oh and I was like yes I said you just gave me the greatest compliment that anybody yeah. could ever give me and he said that uh -huh. wasn't the compliment and I said oh no I know my name's written in the book of life, but you just acknowledged that my name's written in the book of life. Yes. Wow. So I want to be the blankety blank Christ follower that they look at us and go, oh, you're one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, when, it's incredible. Like it talks about in scriptures when there's the prince and principalities, prince of the heirs. Sometimes we're dealing with lower level demons, which like you said, they're, they're not very smart, but they have a lot of intelligence because they've had a long time to gain intelligence. But that doesn't mean they're always smart. Uh huh. And when I'm dealing with a principality, then it's usually come deal with this one, but that's after I have broken the legal rights. Yes. So okay. Important. And I think you'll agree with it important thing yeah. you can do with doing any kind of deliverance is breaking off the legal rights. Yeah. Was and can you explain maybe to some of the users uh, in the fallen angels and Nephilim group or wherever they're watching, maybe can you share a little bit of like, what are legal rights? Because a lot of people are unfamiliar with this terminology. Okay. Um, a lot of people get confused because they say, since Jesus died on the cross, he died for all to take all of our curses. Well, you have to actually go back to the Hebrew and look what that says. And what Jesus did was he died and he gave us the key to break all of those. Mm -hmm. So when, when they, they say, there's a reason that it says in the Bible that curses can go back generations. Depending sure. on whether it was a ritual done or whether it is a personal sin, Rituals can go back even farther because then you're talking about blood covenants and rituals that were done. So one thing I have found um, with hundreds of kids that I have have rescued out of this is yeah. that 80 to 85 percent of them, if not more, were had been promised in a ritual by a free uh, Freemason grandfather. Mm, yeah, so always Freemasonry thing right there. Mm -hmm. it, if you've had Freemasonry of any kind in your family, um, a father, a grandfather, a grand, 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 grandfather back, then mm -hmm. you 
break that off because what people don't realize is the people that they're involved in. It's not just a good businessman's association, even exactly. though that's for it. Yeah. Um, once they mm -hmm. get to a certain level in those, they're performing rituals. And once they get to a certain level above 25, they're having to participate in child sacrifices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not commonly known. And a lot of people reject it because they're their father or their grandfather was, was a really good man. And, um, mm -hmm. they, they, but my grandfather would have never done that, but they are, they pledge unto death not to divulge the secrets. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they make a covenant every single degree uh, in yeah. order to advance. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An interesting thing. Um, with one particular person I was working with is they had literally yeah. thousands of inserted children in them that didn't belong to them that were put there mm -hmm. as like cards. And Jesus had me start doing, um, Oh my, my, I just went look with the name, um, a continuing case in court. What is that called? Um, uh, hmm. I know what you mean, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know the actual word ever ends. And I'll think of the name in a, in a second, but some of the reasons, the legal reasons that those children were allowed to be taken, one of the big reasons is they accepted candy or a treat Interesting. Or a puppy in exchange. Now, to help explain this, if anybody has watched the most recent Wonder Woman, it was about making a wish and there's always a trade. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. that is, there's spiritual truths in that movie. Every time you make a, do anything, there's a trade. Mm -hmm. And when these children traded, the enemy didn't have to tell them, well, I'm going to give you this candy or I'm going to give you this puppy, but you're trading yeah. me your soul. Mm -hmm. Some of them had trespassed. They'd cut a car across people's land. Um, one child in particular, yeah. he had been told to stay out of his parents' bedroom over and over. Yeah. And they went out and he got in their bedroom and he also went in his big brother's room and then was outside riding his bike and got snatched. He was a trespasser. He was wow. breaking. Mm -hmm. um, another little boy, he was from an older time period, like maybe 1910 or 20. Yeah. And had been taking trash to eat out of a trash can, like apple cores. Yeah. He was feeling that didn't belong to him. Wow. So the enemy perceived legal rights. And what I did in these court cases is I broke that off. And I don't have the verse in front of me, but um, it's in Isaiah where it talks about a child cannot be held responsible for the sins of their father. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I have. I was reading I that the other day. Court, and they're also not of the age of accountability. Accountability, yeah. And so I've placed that into court case after court case, mm -hmm. bedded those into ongoing cases that those were, they did not know what they were doing. They were not of an age of accountability. Yeah. And so there's mm -hmm. a lot of that that the enemy now is not able to use. But. Mm -hmm. If people start thinking about legal rights in the movie, Nefarious addresses that very thing because the guy that's interviewing him asked the demon, well, what causes you to have these open doorways basically? Yeah. And he just grinned and he goes, it's layer upon layer of yeses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's the simple yes. Yes to sin and yes to all of these other things. Yes. Yeah. yeah for even for me, like, like when I was a kid, I would be tormented by demons and uh, I was always extremely fearful of the dark. Uh, I would have to sleep with night lights, and I would have all these little uh, plush toys around me to kind of protect me because I was so um, scared at night. And uh, there was times where um, and I would have a lot of nightmares, but there was this one night where I got thrown around in my bed, just like in the movie The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. And I know for, at least for me, born in the 80s, like we watched a lot of these kind of movies as kids. There was, you know, no real parental guidance when it came to late night watching of these type of movies and even pornography that was on late at night. Mm -hmm. And so 
not on, on, on top of the fear of, of all of this kind of stuff, um, there was that one night where um, demons were throwing me in my bed, throwing me in and around my bed. And I remember seeing all of these entities um, walking in my room that night. And um, even at a young age, because of being exposed to pornography, those are other doorways. And most people have been exposed to porno pornography as a kid. And then that opens the door to lust and all these other doorways, right? Oh, that's and so, mm -hmm. Let's look at just common things where the church puts a huge emphasis on just on homosexuality. It says that's the biggest sin. But when yeah. you look at the verse, it says gossip lying, slandering. So let's talk about the little old ladies at the back of the church that are gossiping. Yeah. Let's talk about road rage. Let, you know, all these things that, well, it's, it's just, I'm just mad at people driving. No, you are doing one of the things that God says he abhors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, abhors yeah. a God. he abhors lying. He abhors slandering. And that's that's rampant right now of people slandering other people. Yeah. Huge difference in bringing something before the body. If you've yeah. approached that person and you're doing it biblically and you're saying, I've gone to this person, they refuse to repent and mm -hmm. maybe platform or whatever they've got. Yeah. Okay. I've gone to him. He's done this and he refuses to repent. Then you can bring it before the body, but there's yeah. people. Or just slandering people because of the enemy. Yeah, and I think one of the problems too is that I've noticed is a lot of the heresy hunter type of ministries that you find, mm -hmm. and the more and more of something that I mean, the Holy Spirit has spoken to me, um, and even in um, in encounters with the Lord in the heavenly realms, where Jesus has strike very kind of um, strikingly said to me that a lot of these ministries, the judgment of God is going to be on them. And mm -hmm. because, and the thing is, is some of the, the things that people have been saying have been actually speaking out against the moves of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, whether it be like, you know, praying in tongues or holy laughter and, and a lot of different things like that, there's been, um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of, um, people that have spoken out against it and the Lord is actually going to judge them. And so one of the things that, I mean, I teach is that do not um, go up against the Holy Spirit, the war, the moving of the Holy Spirit, because it is something that is actually quite grievous. Um, and I think that in the day and age that we live in, a lot of times people will um, post things specifically divisively, but to gain, you know, almost like a following yeah. and gain, you know, kind of like uh, attraction in that. Uh, and I think it's really important for us to also recognize that there is a counterfeit, yes, of the way that the enemy moves. And there can be like, for example, we talk about Kundalini spirit a lot, right? Through a lot of uh, occult practices, new age and different things like that, energy healing, um, you know, yep. horoscopes and all this. Mm -hmm. And with the Kundalini spirit, a lot of times there is a shaking and a, um, a, a, a wreathing and wiggling like a serpent on the floor. So we'll be doing a deliverance and the Kundalini spirit or a Python spirit of witchcraft, etc., may actually cause the person to wiggle on the floor like a snake. Of course, yeah. we can bind it and, and, and tell them to sit back up and speak, speak properly, like, right? But a lot of times people will mistake, Christians will mistake that Kundalini spirit or Python spirit, and they'll say, oh, just beca because Christians, for example, uh, come under the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the glory being so strong that you can actually shake under the anointing, under the glory of God. So mm -hmm. let's look at the Bible verse, and I don't have my Bible, and I can't pull up the yeah. app, but if you look at the reason why the high priest, yeah. when they went into the, inner, the Holy of Holies, they yeah. had a rope tied around them because being in that presence, they could fall out. They could die. They could literally have a heart attack yeah. and, and nobody else was allowed to enter. So they had that rope in case they have to pull him back out. Yeah. And, you know, another thing with that, too, that is fascinating is it's like, um, and I want, I want to ask you a question on this, is um, being in 
the presence of God, because we're talking about a little bit of deliverance and demons and fallen angels, but also we want to talk about heavenly things, God in, uh, in the way he manifests. And so in your encounters or visions with the Lord, when you've been in the presence of the Lord or in the throne room, right? And the, the Bible mm -hmm. talks about how we can enter in to the most holy place because the forerunner, Jesus Christ, has made a way. He's torn the veil. But when you've been in the presence of the Lord, can you share maybe a little about, a bit about that? what that actually has done to you? Like, were you able to stand or were you tired afterward? What happened? Absolutely. But and I want to preface it with this is when, and I'm, I know it's the same way with you. When I enter into the presence of the Lord, I'm not willing myself to go there. I'm not sitting and trying to, like some uh -huh. people say, I'm trying to meditate and I'm going to see myself uh -huh, in uh -huh. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's never by my anywhere that Jesus takes me, he takes me and I'm yeah. willing to go wherever he takes me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first time that I was in the actual presence of God, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see his, There was so much glory. I can't see his face, but I know it was him sitting on the throne and it was just me on my face because I, the glory was so heavy. I couldn't yeah. see. I literally mm, yeah. could not step. That's how, yeah, that's how it the was for me the first couple I, times, yeah. I can do more things now. I can, yeah. I can sit and have a conversation with him. I can, yeah. you know, I can talk to other in the room. Yes, Where yeah. The first time it was, the glory is so heavy. Yeah. Um, in, in meetings before, where the presence... Yeah. Of mm -hmm. Holy Spirit just took over, and the entire room there might be 50, 100, 200 people in the room, and nobody can get up off the floor because yeah. the fear is so stupid that if mm -hmm. you tried to lift your hand, it's literally like there's weights on you, the air yeah. becomes heavy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like no gravity, yeah, it's like gra or not, no gravity, it's like there's so it's much super. So much gravity, yeah. That it's pushing you into the floor because the yeah. it's so heavy, the weight, the weighty presence. Yes, absolutely. It's so weighty you can't move. The more that you're in the glory, it's not that you're taking it for granted, it's but you have you become accustomed to the atmosphere. Yes, exactly. Because I think what happens uh, is the spirit man or the spirit woman, it begins to grow and become more Christ-like, right? In a sense, because when you encounter God in in that way, in the heavenly realms, you are changed. You, you can no longer be the same um, no. after encountering God. And the more and more time you spend with the Lord is he will open, in a sense, what like more amazing things to you that you cannot even imagine um and so i i think it's it's a progressive journey right is just how well, like moses some of the miraculous things of being yeah. in the glory. um i was in a meeting in seven maybe seven closer to almost eight years ago um i was in a meeting at joan hunters and yeah. joshua mills and david herzog were there Oh, yeah. And I, because they were talking about being able to find gemstones, how they found gemstones and being in the glory, I yeah. was expectant just saying, okay, Papa, I know you're going to give me something tonight. And yeah. I was expectant and looking for it. And I found the first gemstone wow. that ever that ministry. And from that night on, I was my hands have been embedded with not gold dust, but diamond dust. Wow. And I can impart it to other people. Yeah. And they, oh, well, you're just trying, you know, that's just show off. No, it's a weapon. It is embedded in my armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a weapon of warfare. Yeah. And it's protection. Yeah. It, yes, God loves to give his kids beautiful yeah. things and wonderful things. And that's a mm -hmm. part of it. But yeah. there's always a reason behind it. That gemstone, mm -hmm. I first one I found, I keep it in a little glass vial. And wow. I, it tells me when to have somebody. I found a green egg. Wow. 
when to have somebody hold it and I'll have them do that and put it to their heart every time they just hit the floor wow. and it takes them on some amazing journey yeah. with, it. but it's, it's like exactly something that they needed at the moment. It might be breakthrough for something. It might be um, one person. It was a revelation. Yeah. They had needed answers on what they were going to do next in yeah. their ministry. Um, it might have been deliverance, but there's mm -hmm. one gifts that God gives you. Yeah. And that's like kind of similar to the handkerchief uh, of what is it, Paul, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where the if that touched the the apron or the the handkerchief touched people there, they would actually be healed. Right. And so that's amazing. And can you share a little bit more on the um, the the diamonds in the spiritual realm? Like what do you what do you encounter in the spiritual realm related to all these like diamonds and gold and all this kind of stuff? If you okay. could share a little bit about that. I had found that not long before Steve came to stay at my house and we were talking about that one night. And an angel came and showed him we we're, we're like, OK, where do diamonds actually come from in heaven? And this angel showed him a vision of there's the streets of gold. There's diamonds embedded in stuff. There's diamonds in the walls. And, he, and the angel just showed him literally like boom, picking one out and, and dropping them down in yeah. meeting. He said, there's diamonds everywhere. And then scripture talks about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing is they're, they're dropping us gifts. And when people, the people that say, oh, well, gold dust, that's just, that's demonic and all that. Well, the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. The, the walls, there's, there's yeah. all kinds of things that are covered in yeah. gold. And to the Jews, the gold actually represented the manifest presence of the Lord. Yes. Right? And so that is a prophetic picture to the ancient Israelite. And so gold, they're like, there's one story, I can't remember who it was, um, but they were they were in Israel and they were speaking to like a Jewish rabbi or someone. And uh, he had a little bit, this Jewish rabbi, I guess, had a little bit of disdain for Christians, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of course, there was like, you know, uh, my way is the right way. And what happened was, um, as they be, kind of began to talk, um, uh, it was actually Henry Groover. And he shared with this uh, rabbi guy or this um, Jewish guy how... Um, he's here on a missionary assignment, praying over uh, Israel and everything. And then he shared how in the churches there uh, in the Christian churches back in like America, he said, he shared how there was gold dust. And that guy was, he just went crazy saying like the, there's literally there's gold that is raining in the Christian churches. And that Jewish guy basically began to share how to, again, to them, that re represents the manifest presence of God. And so the thing is, is that there's a lot of strange things that God can speak in symbolism and all these different things because it's a picture. It paints a picture of something. And God can also do miracles that can, of course, to the natural mind of even the Christian believer, some of this stuff is just, it, it's wild. It sounds crazy. And the thing is, is that when you then you search the scripture, the Holy Spirit will then show you in scripture, there's something related to that, but it's hidden. And you might have read the script, that particular verse 50 times, mm -hmm. but it's that one time the Holy Spirit by his spirit will then tutor you. He'll teach you and show you this is a mystery. And behold, I'm revealing it to you through wisdom and understanding. And it's not through the academic lens that we often try to approach the Bible uh, from. And yes, we need that. And we need to be able to, um, you know, have proper uh, exegesis when reading scripture, proper interpretation. But there's times where the Holy Spirit will tutor you and it will it will be revelation that will blow your mind. So well, when I had mentioned earlier that it can also be a weapon. Yeah. Um, that time when Steve and I this and yeah the person that he was traveling with was sitting in between us on the couch and I said Steve would you like me to impart this diamond dust to you and he goes yeah mm -hmm. so you know we had our hands in front of the person and I you know I had my hand on his hand 
And I was praying for God to, I said, it's a gift you've given me and I give freely to Steve. Well, the person he was traveling with reached out and grabbed my hand at the same time. And she was completely covered from head to toe. Wow. One of the witch altars that she had, because she lots and lots. And there were some altars that had been programmed to be that were legit full fledged witches. And that one manifested up screaming and said, it burns. Get it off of me. Get it off of me. It burns. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I well, kind of too late for that. And <laughs> she was just a little girl, but she was still a witch and had been taught to yeah. be that. And so she, Steve had to have her go and let Jesus go deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. But these are weapons of warfare. These are not just to... Oh, it looks pretty. Oh, I got gold dust, everyone. I'm our special. No, these are weapons of our warfare. Yes, yeah. And um, also to backtrack to the altars, what we're referring to um, for those who are unfamiliar with the dimensions of the soul, the human soul is, it's a realm and it's a dimension and it can be wounded. It can be crushed. It can be bruised. Uh, and you can read about a lot of this in in, in the Psalms, in Job. Um, Mm -hmm. And actually all throughout the scripture, it talks about how, again, the human uh, soul can be um, broken and shattered. And so some of the words that we use, uh, even in clinical like psychology, there are specific words that they use, such as DID, which is dissociative identity disorder. Think of almost like schizophrenia, um, you know, and so these we typically call soul wounds or soul fractures, soul parts. Uh, There's many different names for them, Uh, but essentially it's the fragments of the human soul, which is your soul is your mind, your will and emotions. And when you have trauma, torture, heartbreak, certain events can actually cause you to disassociate from the event because it's so painful that the actual soul then fragments and it becomes encapsulated at the age of the trauma or whatever happened, holding specific emotions, maybe it's abandonment or rejection or fear. And then um, whatever event is a tie to it is that part can actually be continuously tormented um, in what we call regions of captivity. Mm -hmm. And so this part of of this fragmented soul, essentially um, the kingdom of darkness can do certain things to it, but also in the course of a person's life, for example, like a satanic ritual abuse survivor, an SRA survivor, is alters, these alternate personalities or fractures, they will manifest, they'll come up. And it will be, again, a fra- usually it is the fracture of that person. Um, of course, earlier, um, Michelle talked a little bit about like foreign soul parts or alters. And that's a little, it's a lot more complex. But just know that the human soul can be fractured. And these parts will come up. And so, for example, there might be some of you on here that actually have soul wounds. Or maybe you were married or dated someone who was like just crazy. They would they would get triggered by something, let's say in a fight, and they would become a totally, completely different person. Mm -hmm. And after the argument, they may not even remember what happened or might they may not even acknowledge how ridiculous Uh, they were being. And that could be a symptom of them actually a soul part coming up, arguing or whatever. And basically, um, it's basically an amnesic wall. They're not aware of it. Uh, And so that's kind of what Michelle has been talking about. They can do that. Um, Loss of time. Yes. um, Periods of time that they don't remember. They're um, buying things that they don't remember buying. Um, personality flipping, flipping and flipping, you know, they're, they're all happy and joyful one minute. And then the next minute, it's like, sometimes even the voice will change and they'll be mean and cranky. And then they'll be back with all happy. Yeah. And those are very good signs that there was some kind of intense trauma in that person's life. No. And here's something that people don't understand about SRA. And when we talk about ritual abuse, SRA does not have to be a satanic ritual. Like you mentioned, it can be anyone from having crappy parents that the enemy used to ritually 
break you. Yeah. A husband, a wife. It can be all kinds of things that uh, that the enemy ritually used to break you. Yeah. That is all ritual abuse, all the way to the deepest, darkest rituals. Yeah. That mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the enemy went in and purposefully through torture yeah. broke the person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know what I find is like in. A lot of the severe cases, um, like you were saying, it's not always like rituals. Um, a lot of times it is uh, wounding, generational wounding and or like uh, generational iniquity. And when I refer to it as iniquity, it's a, such a deep level of perversion. It could be uh, over many generations where this is built up. And think of it like um, almost like a genetic, spiritual genetics, mm -hmm. DNA, your spiritual DNA, where a portion of this can actually... Uh, impact you and it's basically built up in the bloodline and so down the bloodline which may be you then you all of a sudden have your parents were extremely abusive they literally were um in every form or fashion they were horrible yeah. and a lot of times this can be a signal or a sign of generational iniquity generational curses which those curses are actually demonic they're demons they will manifest as demons yes but essentially most of the times, the people that are really wounded is you can tell as uh, when you um, kind of have experience in deliverance and inner healing, you can tell like a, a person is wounded by just actually um, seeing the way that they operate or the way that they hold themselves. We can a lot of times just sense this, discern it. Uh, and, and typically we find all the way in the bloodline, there are some evil covenants uh, for example, like in my bloodline, it was um, um, I had I didn't have really, really crazy things, but I had an ancestor who murdered his his wife. Then he buried her in the like a rice field. So I could see it in a vision when the, like the Lord was showing me. And during my deliverance, when I was getting my uh, deliverance and I could see actually in like on mountains, he buried her in some sort of like underground in like the rice fields or some sort of grassy area with water. And he, after he buried her, he made a pact with a demon saying, Hey, if I never get caught, then basically I'll dedicate myself to you. And that had inadvertently basically dedicated the entire bloodline. And so there was then this spirit of murder and rage and anger and jealousy that operated in the bloodline. And so my parents basically, when they were uh, in their early in their marriage, um, my father became extremely violent and my mom actually left him. We left him for a month. My mom grabbed me and my sister and left him. There was a restraining order and everything. And eventually they reconciled, but that was in their marriage. Now, when I got married, everything was lovey and dovey because, you know, at 18 and 19 years old, you know that love, everything is going to be perfect. If all we need is love. And so we were really broken, both me and Jeannie. And so early on in our marriage, um, through really complex things, what ended up happening is I came home one night and I was going to basically use a knife and end her. And it was only by the power of God that it was actually my guardian angel that stepped in and actually I placed the knife down and I found out this years later, but it was that same spirit of murder, jealousy, and rage or multiple spirits actually that were operating in my life. And it wasn't until many years later, it was probably, you know, 10, 15 years later, when eventually um, I had deliverance and I was able to, um, you know, have uh, be set free from these things. Although, be honest with you, after shortly after that, I became born again after me and my wife uh, got separated and I was arrested. But so I found the Lord. That's how the Lord had basically kind of used it for me to find him and be, get, get born again. But throughout those years, I, um, I didn't have to really deal with that particular demon. When um, I got born again, there were demons that actually had left. Not all of them, but there was some key ones that left. Um, but it was later on, you know, many years later when I actually had a formal deliverance um, that there were some lingering ones that they really didn't have too much power in my life because I was already walking a sanctified life. And so a lot of the things that I was doing had just weakened them to such an extent that they were basically, they couldn't do anything in my life, but they were still inhabiting my body or my soul. They were still there. 
uh, causing other issues, uh, health issues and stuff like that. Um, so Michelle, why don't you share a little bit about your heavenly encounters and maybe some of the things that Jesus has actually maybe taught you. Maybe it's about early creation, watching the creation or different dynamics of, in the spirit realm. Um, one of my first adventures that uh, last year, my, my blog that I had completely crashed and I'm still oh. trying on putting everything back together. Uh -huh. But Jesus took me on this adventure. Um, I would go to this town called Fairhaven a lot, which is a, a little town that's in heaven. And there's a, there's shop, there's a school there. And I would see David teaching in the school and I've, I've met Esther there. Um, she yeah. always children gathered around her and, and teaching them and talking to them. And this one particular time I was with yeah. a group of friends and one of them's watching right now. And we were walking along the shops and I was like, Jesus, where do you want us to go? And I was drawn to an old, like a clock shop that had it. Yeah. The window, it was almost like in um, Back to the Future, how they had all those clocks on the wall. There mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. every kind of clock that was yeah. up in, in there. And I was drawn to go in there. So we went in mm -hmm. and I looked at all the clocks. I'm like, Is, what are you trying to show me? And he kept saying, it's about time. And I was like, okay, does that mean it's about time I did something? And he goes, that <laughs> Um, but as we're looking around, I could see the back of the shop, there was a doorway and there was an old man that was bent and kind of hunched over a working table. And I could only see the back of him and he was working on something. And I was drawn to go and stand behind him and look at what he was working on. Yeah. And I had this pocket watch completely taken apart and all the inner cogs were spread out across the table the wheels and every part of the pocket watch. And as I started peering into those pieces of the watch, yeah. the wheels, the cogs, I could see galaxies spinning. Wow. Wheels. And I was like, this, this is amazing. And I heard like, a, and I went, Oh, Papa. And he, he didn't look at me, he kept working. And he goes, okay, son, it's time. Well, then Jesus entered. And this is something that blew my mind because we're always taught that all snakes are bad. Mm -hmm. But don't understand the word Nakash. And he walked in with a huge snake-like creature with yeah. legs, arms. And I'm like, ah! And he, he looked at me, he goes, what, you think we all were dumb and fell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to kind of adjust my mindset. Again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, there's been something you wanted to ask. And it went back to some in the courts of heaven where yeah. I had had a court order that Satan was supposed to deal with this situation. Had been, um, he'd been court ordered to yeah. stop and retribution. And mm -hmm. I said, why, why is not seeing anything happen with this? Yeah. And he goes, it's time to show you. And he went over the big door and he opened this huge door and we, we walked out onto a platform and we're looking into cosmos. Just, mm -hmm. it wasn't just the universe. It was universes and spinning and, and just beautiful. And we're wow. looking. And if you've ever seen the newer Alice in Wonderlands, in there they have a scroll, and the scroll unwinds, and it, it shows all these things on the scroll, these events. Yeah. Well, across the heavens, I saw this big, like, scroll unwind, and I knew that was my scroll, because I saw things about my life all on this. But in the scroll, there was big holes punched in it like big black holes. And I went, what is that? And he goes, what you have to remember is that the enemy was with us when we created. And they don't know how to create 
but they watched enough and they know enough that they know how to damage creation. He said, so these whole uh, timeline, the enemy had taken their fist and punched home. And I was like, well, how, how are we going to fix that? Jesus, are you going to, you, can you fix it? And yeah. he goes, I could. He goes, but you're going to fix it. Wow. Like, ah, <laughs> you're funny. Hey, how am I going to fix that? He goes, we're going to do it together. And I'm going to teach you how to do this. And mm -hmm. then you're going to teach other people. And long story short, I'll, I'll get the blog. Re it's, it's written. I just need to. Wow. You know, but what he did was he took me by the hand yeah. and started singing and dancing over holes in this timeline and as we sung and danced and through the rock words that came out of yeah. our mouth here's what we forget many times when you know that you know that you know who you are then jesus knows that you know who you are the enemy knows that you know who you are but then you're speaking with the rock sound waves that god used to create creation yes yeah we have that capability to speak. Speak life. And as we sang and spoke over those holes, it's like ribbons came out of my mouth. Yeah. And as we're dancing out of my feet and they're reweaving. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and not just repairing it, rewove it to be even better than new. Wow. That's amazing. And we did that over each one of the holes to redeem the, what the enemy, because he said the enemy can't fix it. He had, he doesn't know how. He can be court ordered to stop and he can be court ordered to fix it, but he can't fix something he has no capability to fix. Mm -hmm. He said, you, my bride, were given the capability to be like us. Mm -hmm. He goes, you are created in our image and likeness. Yeah. That's amazing. Because you're created in our image and likeness, you have the capabilities to speak with that rock power, those sound waves. That's why mm -hmm. it's very important to remember that words are powerful. Yeah. You have to be careful of the words that you speak because that's why bring life or death. And so we, we must be careful with our words. Mm. But we can reweave through praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. To show us those holes that need to be mended and start praising and worshiping. It doesn't have to be us coming, like a word's coming to our, our you know, a, a song that we have to come up with. Mm -hmm. We praise and worship. And I don't mean feel good songs, I mean songs that worship him yeah mm -hmm. and then you can reweave those holes mm -hmm. that the enemy through times before we were born we ha he knew us before we were born mm -hmm. so the enemy has been trying to kill us before yeah. we were born yeah that see that's an interesting thing you said right there is he knew us before we were born and uh, why don't you share maybe a little bit about, has the Lord shown you anything about the human spirit um, way back before oh. early creation? Yes. And Ginger, who's on here also, we yeah. were in court and then Jesus took us to show us. And it goes back to, um, I can't think of the verse right now, but it, it where it's talking to Lucifer and I said, I set you before. Um, kings and and kingdoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no kings and kingdoms at that time. That for the yeah. king of Kyrie, that that it's people yeah. supposed they're just talking about that. No, at that point, talking about Lucifer, mm -hmm. and this goes back to the fiery stones. Yes. Back to where we were, who we were, the essence of us before mm -hmm. we were placed in these earth suits. Yeah. We were inside the father, birthed inside the father. Yes. Um, this is a whole nother amazing 
important thing, but what Ginger and I were both shown is that these are some things that had to be rene redeemed. We were apprentices under mm -hmm. Lucifer when he was leading worship for heaven. He was given oh. people uh, over whatever you want to call us then, essences or whatever. Yeah. I call it the spiritual essence, which yeah. was from the beginning. Yeah. And these are things that had to be broken off because when it talks about on the, that Lucifer was doing things on the trading floor, mm -hmm. trading yeah. these souls that he had charge over. Exactly. On entities to in exchange, gain more power. And he was doing this over and over again to gather as much power as he could to do what? Because he wanted to kick, this is his words. He said, I was going to kick the old man off of his throne. So I can do a better job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, wow. he was trading those who had the essences that he had in his charge. Um, yeah. And here's one of the scripture verses by your great wisdom in your trade, you have increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Ezekiel 28, five. Yes. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, it's right there in scripture. Yeah. It, we were, before we were born into the earth suits. And I know that sounds really strange to a lot of people. And, and over the years, every time I think I have God totally out of my box, I find out that, oh, I've, I've still got a box. <laughs> and scripture blows your mind. And people will argue with you and say, but that's not what scripture says. Well, no, it says right there. It talks about the fiery stones. It talks about that he made trades. What did he make trades with? He made trades with things that were in his charge. Yeah. The essences. And yeah, that's what I believe as well. Mm -hmm. Go in court and um, we had piles and piles that were being brought in of contracts that had been signed. Oh. And we had to have those annulled. And here's just an interesting thing to throw out. And we can talk about the courts of heaven another day. Yeah. But I need everybody to understand this. One thing, point that Jesus made in, in a court one day, he stepped forward and he goes, stop. And he asked me, he goes, in your courts in the earth, if someone is insane and they have signed a contract Mm. is it can it hold in court i said mm -hmm. no no so he turned to the court and he said record this for all time he goes every evil one when they were removed from the presence of my father became insane wow so every contract that they signed yes there's ginger's writing that now every contract that they signed cannot hold in court because yeah. of their insanity mm. can turn that around on them. It doesn't matter what contract, yeah. what blood contract, a, a written oath, yeah. a oath, it cannot hold or stand in court when you present the fact you were insane. Mm -hmm. I that to the court and it is immediately annulled. Wow. And we were bringing that to the courts that these, that they were insane later, but we asked Jesus when they started trading yeah. the, on the trading floors, I said, were they insane or with their full capacities? And he just looked at me and he goes, they would have to be insane to try to come up against my father and to do the things that they did. Mm. Wow. You know, it's so fascinating because there's like the pieces of the different puzzle. You kind of, um, the Holy spirit will lead you to different things in scripture. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's this one time or several different visions that I've had and encounters, but there was this, um, uh, at, at that time, it was kind of like more like a theory of what was going on, what had happened in the ancient times, um, eons past, if you want to call it. 
And I had encounters in um, high level SRA deliverance, um, Illuminati bloodline um, uh, kind of uh, clients, where in those sessions, there were interesting things that would happen where, for example, we would deal with all sorts of fallen angels, watchers, and then, of course, Nephilim demons, warrior class, strong men, and untether entire realms um, of, of uh, demonization and, and regions of captivity of healing parts and, and having them delivered out of that. And we eventually came toward the end of the session, one of the sessions, because as you know, with SRA, sometimes it's many, many sessions, years sometimes. But at the end of one very um, powerful session, there was a part that had, I guess, come up toward the end. And at this point, um, it was a Lord that was ministering to the part. And I talked about in this particular scenario, it was actually a Holy Spirit healing capsule where the Holy Spirit had actually encapsulated the human soul and also the spirit of the, the, the SRE survivor and because of the intense trauma and fracturing. And what happened was um, there were several things that were actually learned from this or gleaned from this was that um, I found out that, oh, my human spirit, which is the spirit man, um, is actually present in a lot of the work that we do. And I would have patients that would be able to see my spirit man. And this was one of those times where my spirit was actually, in a sense, um, with Jesus. Jesus was kneeled there, but there was another entity that the patient saw, which looked at first like a shadow. And so immediately, in my mind, I thought, you're seeing this? Or oh, maybe it's a remaining demon that we got to get rid of because we were at the end of the session. But what happened is I said, Holy Spirit, what is this? Who is this? And in that moment, the Holy Spirit said, that's you. That's your spirit, man. And at the same time, the patient said, it's your spirit. It's your spirit, man. And I was actually veiled in, in armor. She could describe it and stuff. And um, in my other, uh, you know, kind of uh, sessions and stuff like that, I had kind of learned about spiritual armor. And so you, you actually in the spirit... Uh, as you grow and mature in the spirit, you actually are veiled in armor and Jesus can actually upgrade your armor. I've gone through different iterations of gold, silver armor, ivory colored white armor that leans like the sun. And so what happened is in that session, we found out, oh, it was actually my spirit man. But what happened is there was her actual spirit, her spirit uh, woman actually came up and spoke and said, um, as Jesus was actually healing and the spirit man spoke and said how I was with the father in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I played a harp by his side. And this was before like creation at some point, because we actually were uh, from what the Lord has taught me and shown me is we were birthed inside of the father's heart. All spirits actually came from inside the father. That's why we are intimately connected with, with God. That's why he loves us so much because we're a part of him. And so that spiritual essence was birthed in God. And from there, when Lucifer, and again, I'm not, I use Lucifer and Satan interchangeably, but I believe there are separate entities, but we're, I'll try not to get into that. But essentially Lucifer in the beginning, as Michelle was saying, was at some point was trading and trafficking soul parts, which we call cosmic soul trade, the Babylonian soul trade. And, in that time frame, that's part of part of the pride and all of the stuff that he was doing um, as he walked inside the father, which is where the fiery stones are. What the Lord has revealed to me was um, because I've walked with Jesus inside the father and on those stones as well. And actually, those are like testing stones. And the there was a 10th stone that I had seen when, when the Lord had brought me there uh, or a couple of times. But that ten, that tenth stone is actually Jesus. Mm -hmm. It represents him as a cornerstone. And what happens is you can only come to God through humility. Yep. And because Lucifer had pride in him, he could not step upon the, the Jesus, essentially, the yes. cornerstone. Again, a lot of this is like symbolic, but at the same time, in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly realms, there is a truth to it. It is yes. a physical thing, but it's also a symbolic thing. It's and so really Jesus being that cornerstone. Exactly. 
And it's a shadow of things in the natural realm. But Jesus being that cornerstone, when Lucifer could no longer be inside the Father, and thus he was also kicked out in that regard. But because of that trafficking and the merchandising of what he was doing, that is basically God kicked them out. And I heard someone else speak about this where God, merciful and loving, actually wanted to find a place. Scripture talks about how God tried to find a place for him, but there was none. And the only place that there could be was separation from God because of God's holiness. And that is why hell was created for the fallen angels. And but you get so confused on that with the, what, what hell is. Hell literally is the complete and utter absence of God. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Hell. Yeah. And I mean, there's a temporary hell ish realm. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times we'll inter use words like Sheol, uh, yeah. right? Regions of captivity, but within hell, the current hell, because it's not the final lake of fire, right? The current hell, there are different regions from when I've, when I've been there and when the, what the Lord has shown me. And there's places where living humans, the, the soul wounds can be tortured, but yes. there are other parts of it where fallen entities are also essentially, or in, and humans that have actually died are basically being tortured yes. from separation. So there's uh, different parts of it. Yeah. Different realms of hell. You can call it levels of hell. Yeah. Levels. Yeah. And that you have a game or a movie, a video that's yeah. talking about the demonic realm. There's always some elements of a spiritual truth, a spiritual realm truth in there. So mm -hmm. much of what you see in the, in the demonic video games yeah. are that actually happen yeah um, things in harry potter which has been funny is i never could understand god kept he was telling me to read all the books and everybody's yeah. oh no 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 and i'm like okay but god telling me to read them no, I, I know <laughs> yeah but basically what you're reading is if you're reading a football instruction manual for the opposing team yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah. they're not for everybody it's to strategic read. it's strategic Yes, it was strategic training. Everything that's in those books is absolutely real. There's real mentors. The um, where he's breaking the things and putting it in stones and all of that. He's breaking soul piece. That's just a breaking soul pieces. And mm -hmm. Yeah, soul fragments. And I mean, you think about even Lord of the Rings. Actually, there is witchcraft and stuff like that. But yes. it's a Christian author. So therefore, it's okay to watch, right? And of course, we're not trying to say you should go out and watch all witchcraft movies. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is there is there's there's tidbits and nuggets of information mm -hmm. that God will sometimes actually uh, teach you through media, through whatever it movies books and different things and lord of the rings actually there's several different stuff within the books and the movies that actually is like a representation of things in the spirit that actually do exist oh right? absolutely i yeah. i have used those things that i learned from harry potter books i have mm -hmm. used them in deliverance over and over again especially mm -hmm. with sra victims there was a literal in your face answer that they gave wow that Interesting. here's how this was dealt with in the movie and i did the exact same thing in real life and it stomped the enemy's butt wow amazing i mean god god can use like almost anything and you know when you think about a lot of these kind of things is all there's sometimes when uh i mean i i like movies uh sci-fi and stuff like that because there's like you know it's so interesting like the fantasy or or you know whatever the, the imagination and there's times where I have watched movies and there's, and cause I'm paying attention to a lot of the details and sometimes hidden messages and things like that. But a lot of those kind of things is I'll be like, wow, that's kind of interesting. And you know, it'll, I'll, I'll, I'll be thinking about it. And then the Holy spirit will actually bring me up into heavenly realms or in regions of captivity during deliverance where I will, there will be facets of things that he shows me or teaches me mm -hmm. that it's like, Oh, th like this is actually, this is a, a facet of this is real, you know? Um, yep. Like one, there's this one place. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been there, but I call it the, um, I think when Jesus uh, brought me there, he called it the gr great hall of wisdom and understanding. Now I call it, 
I often like will uh, kind of coin certain names and, and terms. I call it the crystal cave of wisdom and understanding. Because when I was there, I met this. That was one of the first times I met the spirit of wisdom, Lady Wisdom and Lady Understanding, uh, two of the seven spirits of God. But in that place, it literally half of it looked like like a cave, but that had all of the most majestic, massive sized crystals, like a foot and a half. Some of them like massive long. And all of these crystals were in this cave, different colors, the most beautiful colors, emerald, ruby, um, all the sapphire blues, all sorts of colors, yellows. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times the Lord will show me like, or the Holy Spirit will show me like, okay, so these, this crystal cave, the, this is actually wisdom. So what happens is what I would see sometimes like a, a doubled vision where I'm there in the spirit. I'm actually there with Jesus and Lady Wisdom was there. And as Jesus is kind of showing me around, I would see angels and I would actually see saints or the spirit of saints and also mm -hmm. the redeemed people who have died and are actually now in heaven. They were all uh, different redeemed people there, but there were people that were still alive on the earth and angels that would actually pluck these crystals, right? And then the Lord showed me in the spirit, I would see a veil, like a, a separate vision within a vision where on the earth, I saw actually, I can't remember if it was a girl or boy that was actually praying. Someone was praying by their bedside and just asking the Lord, uh, you know, for revelation or, or whatever. And that in the spirit, what was happening is there was an angel that was taking that revelation, that knowledge, and was basically releasing it into the earthly realm. And it came to that believer mm -hmm. in the spirit right through the spirit but they were receiving that revelation but in the spiritual realm this is what's happening it manifests as actually it's a crystal cave of all of these kind of things have you kind of seen anything like that or has a legend I, didn't know. I can't even remember right this moment what i was my purpose was with, of being shown that but yeah. i likened it to um in superman how the, the crystal fortress came up. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was seeing. Um, yes, the crystal citadel. I think that is crystal a separate citadel. place, yeah. Um, that's that's a totally different place, but this chamber that I was in, this huge yeah. chamber, it was like these stalactites, but everything was made of pure crystal and it was gorgeous and echoing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, I'd have to remember, look back at my notes because I haven't thought about this in a long time, but it had to do with sound waves that are embedded in those crystals also. Oh, interesting. And they, there's healing sound waves in those crystals. Oh, wow. So and I what you know, forgotten about that until you brought that up. But yes, I have been there. Wow. You know, okay, so when we are talking about frequency and all this kind of stuff, vibration or light, Remember, guys, is that the new age has tried to pervert some of this stuff. Yeah. When we're referring to vibration or frequency and stuff like that is when you understand light, right? You actually understand that light is a frequency vibration um, and it has different properties. It's not just, oh, it's just light. It provides, you know, um, a, a light, as a light source. It is actually all of these different things. And in heaven, there are these frequencies, for example, um, when we worship the Lord, um, just the, the other week, um, I was in a vision and I found myself at the foot of Jesus. I was actually looking at his, the holes in his, his feet where he was pierced and I was worshiping him in, in the throne room. And as I uh, kind of looked upward, he actually asked me to stand. And so I stood bes beside him and then he said, look, and he pointed to the, um, the throne within the throne room. I saw other saints and other spirits, angels worshiping. And he, what he was showing me, and I've seen this many times before, but in this particular uh, encounter, I was observing the worship of people on their knees, some of them on their knees, some of them with their, you know, just worshiping God. And there was um, the most beautiful waves of worship. That's what I would call it. And it looked like both a symphony of waves that were mm -hmm. vi visible. You could see them. But also the people were moving like waves in, in the sea or like, you know, in a ball game, when people are do that wave, they go and, you know, it just looks really cool. It's all in sequence. 
Yes, it's all in sequence. And that's how the worship was in heaven. But what was interesting is the the worship, the tangible worship, God, the, it was actually, you could see it moving through the Holy Spirit. God was actually riding on the worship of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people in scripture. But it was also being absorbed in Jesus and in the Father. And there was another time where I remember I would see from like the heavenly city, I would be in a different part of the heavenly realms and I would see in the distance, the heavenly city. And I would actually see that worship rising up and you could literally see um, almost like musical notes and other things that were actually visible. You could see them. And they were also like prisms of light shifting in the sky. And that was like, that's how heaven is. It's filled with the glory and the majesty of the Lord, but also the worship of the redeemed saints who have now gone to the heavenly realms. So. And I want to be clear for people listening. The enemy is not able, able. He has zero, none of the enemy. When I say the enemy, I mean any fallen one. They have no capability to create. They can take and pervert. They can twist. They can warp. They can crush, but they cannot create. We are talking about the R-U-A-C-H, the rock, rock, however it is. Yeah. I can never remember how to pronounce it correctly. Ruach. I usually say Ruach, but I Ruach mean, it's all kind of Ruach. Yeah. Of God that created creation. So one of the books that I'm working on is, is called Color Sounds Like Glory, because during my time as a makeup artist, I had a makeup academy and I traveled all over the country and would hold workshops to teach people to become a makeup artist. And one of the things that I really focused on was color theory. Yeah. And so color theory has always been a, a huge love of mine. Well, one mm. of the things that's interesting is inside of your eye, you have three color cones. Oh, yeah. Color is a sound wave. You see color by the sound wave of color coming in and hitting those color cones in your eyes to translate the color to your brain so you can see the color. Is it got simply wow. every Incredible. color has a sound wave? That's yeah. why the color temperatures. Some colors are hot, some colors are cold. They all have a sound wave. There is a yeah. sound wave of it. color is creation. Mm -hmm. And every color has a sound wave. Here's another. This is a whole nother subject. With the, the same color cones and rods that you have in your eye, yeah. in your pineal gland, which is buried deep, deep, deep in your head, mm -hmm. God created that. The enemy gets a hold of it through other through various means. Pervert it, yeah. In your pineal gland, guess what's there? Those what? same color rods is in your eye. Wow. Why would God, because the enemy can't create only God. Yeah. Why place color rods deep in your eye, in your head? Pineal gone, yeah. Because he is showing us how to see into the spirit realm. To spirit, see the yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I liken that into what, what I have found is the enemy likes to get a hold of it and use it like a channel changer to flip oh, it. Yeah. Demonic yeah. frequencies. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's of those frequencies. Yeah. So the enemy holds no right to frequencies because frequencies belong to God. He twists them. He hammers them. He crushes them. He perverts them. But he cannot create anything. And he mm -hmm. wants people to be afraid of frequency. Yes. And um, so that they don't touch it and say, oh, no, I can't have anything to do no. with that cult. When the, there's certain things that God wants us to redeem and take back, and there's certain things that yeah. need to be thrown out. Yeah. A matter of fact, like even within deliverance with a lot of the uh, new agers that we deal with or the former witches that used to astral project is part of my process within deliverance. Uh, we're actually first shutting down the illegal gateways, or we call them chakra gateways, the third eye. We shut this down, and we actually have asked the Lord to cleanse all of those gate, all of those gateways, and even there are sanctified gateways, ones that are God um, has created. Because mm -hmm. remember, your spirit and your soul, even to a degree, 
actually has spiritual organs. And these organs are used to sense in the spirit. Uh, and there's facets of us that are gateways. So we talk about the heart gate, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about the crown gate. And scripture alludes to a lot of these things, the crown gate. We also talk about the, um, I refer to it as the thalamus gate and the occipital gate, which are facets of the human brain biology, which are interconnected with the uh, pineal gland. Because again, this is part of uh, human biology, our physical biology in the flesh. But there's facets of these that are interconnected through those gateways in the spirit man. And that is a portion of it is that's how we actually sense and see in the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's all interconnected. But at the fall in the Garden of Eden, right, these things became to a degree in a fallen state through sin and all this kind of stuff. But of course, Jesus comes dying on a cross to redeem us to then remove that wall of separation. But there is still a sanctification in our life, our whole mind, body and soul and spirit that needs to be sanctified. Right. And how do we do that through prayer, through worship, through relationship with Jesus, through mm -hmm. communion, through, yes. um, you know, worship and communion. People neglect communion a lot nowadays. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Might have it once a month. They might have it um, maybe every once a quarter. Yeah. But you don't have to be in a building to do these things. We mm -hmm. are. the. You can have communion at home every single day with Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That helps to sanctify and cleanse anything yeah. inside of you that the enemy has tainted and perverted. Um, yeah. The enemy did not create that gland. God created that gland. The enemy named it the third eye. And this is, this goes back to what I said earlier about words being important. Yeah. We call something that it becomes that. Mm -hmm. when you start calling it what God created it for, yeah, then it becomes that. And you take away the power of the enemy to even have any hold over it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I found like, even so there was, um, a duration, uh, in the earlier days when me and my friend, we would get together we would, I bought a bunch of the, you know, those, com these communion cups, yes. right? I bought like, I don't know, a thousand of them or something like that. I can't remember how much it was, but we would gather with friends, uh, at my house. And sometimes in my backyard, we, we would call them, um, fire pit prayer sessions. And so in my backyard, we'd set up the fire pit. We'd be out there for hours, sometimes to like four or 5 AM in the morning. So we would pray for like, you know, eight plus hours and, um, and we would fellowship and intercede on behalf of our city um, and everything. And we would take communion and then we would begin to pray. And as we would worship, we'd pray in tongues. And it was during those times where in, in those early days um, where it was the, the tangible presence of the Lord, but also angels would begin to uh, make themselves uh, known or the Lord would reveal. And, you know, one of the important things is you want to test um whenever there's these uh, angels or spirits that appear because you don't want to be deceived. Yes. And one way that you can test them is you ask, who do they serve? And uh, this came up in a group the other day and mm -hmm. people want to uh, only say, no, you only test by using that voice, that verse, did Jesus come in the flesh? And I was like, they know he came in the flesh. Yeah. And there's many ways that we, different ways we can, we can test and also use our discernment. And what my favorite is I ask Jesus, I ask Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit, who is this? Yes. And then the Holy Spirit would speak to me and multiple people and say, this is one of my angels. As a matter of fact, this is your guardian angel. And that usually the first angel you encounter is actually your guardian angel. Um, and so from there it was okay. And then um, over the course of time, you whenever you, again, relying on, on Jesus and Holy Spirit. And this was, bef this was before the days where I would actually see Jesus specifically. Um, it would, um, I, we would see things, uh, or Jesus would take us holy, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He would take us places to see in the spiritual realm, the second heaven, which is the battlefield, spiritual battlefield. Mm -hmm. And he would show us different areas. Uh, and this was before I had actually seen Jesus. 
Um, or like he might have appeared like once or twice, but it wasn't to the effect as eventually as I grew further and further, then it became more of spending time with Jesus in the secret place um, in the garden. That's what I call it, the secret garden, uh, yeah. because that's what it looks like. But I mean, I, I would usually rely on Holy Spirit and I would say, who is this? I don't know this uh, angel or this spirit that is appearing because, uh, again, this is in the spirit. You, the spirit, mm -hmm. your spirit can see it, not not necessarily in the physical, uh, in the natural realm. And from there, the Holy Spirit would say, "This is of me," or "This is this is this is a, a demon or a fallen entity or whatever." Um, but what I found as the intimacy grows with Jesus, you 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 know, you can sense it, um, and there's just it's almost like there's frequency of God. There is a, a, a presence that God brings that is unlike what yes. the enemy will try to manipulate. You know what I mean? But the mm -hmm. best it's like you said at the beginning is the best question to ask is who do you serve? Do you serve Jesus? And if, mm -hmm. you, if it's a demon, there's no way that they're going to say, yes, I serve Jesus. Yeah. Almost. It would, they, they, would, they struggle. They struggle. Yes. Yeah. That's what I find, find as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have keen discernment, but carrying those little communion cups are really important. I have, I have some that I'm ordering this week because yeah. the prayer assignments that Ginger and I are going to be doing, and it's yeah. kind of our little, we do strange things sometimes to other people, but we're going to sign up for some of the ghost tours in our town. Oh, and cleanse the iniquity. Yeah, take those with us. And yeah. We also have water bottles that we've spit into. And that's a whole nother thing of um, that we pour into the ground. Oh, yeah, Similar to like Anna Mendes had done that in yeah. Amsterdam. It carries the DNA of Jesus. Oh, it, interesting. Okay. As we pour that into the ground, it seeps down into the ground. Oh, so, interesting. Cornerstones of Freemason buildings. Yeah. Um, a lot of different things like that. But we're just going to go take these tours and shut it down, shut it down, shut it down mm -hmm. uh, as we go along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of things Praise like they're very handy because yeah. you can keep them um, in a, in a backpack in your purse and, you know, in the glove compartment mm -hmm. of your car. Um, yeah. Okay. Someone said, I don't understand you seeing Jesus. Yeah. So, I mean, what I mean by that is um, in the spirit uh, let me explain it like this is for a lot of those who are new to like, or haven't heard about my visions and encounters or, or even Michelle's is in the garden of Eden, there was the veil of separation through sin, right? There was separation. God, um, Adam and Eve used to walk with God in the garden. It says in the coolness of the day, that word coolness actually is Ruach, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. but in the coolness of the day, the spirit of God was actually walking in the garden. And they heard God in the garden and they had face-to-face -face communion with God. But what happens is after sin, there's a wall of separation now. Sin prevents man. And it, this is followed in the Old Testament through and in the New Testament even where you have the veil of separation that is the whole most holy place or the holy of holies. So you have the outer court, the inner court, and then the holy of holies. And the, the temple or the court, all these different sections represent the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. And what happens is it's a multi-layered symbolism or picture of both the human temple, but also separation of God. So what happens is then Jesus dies on a cross and that, that veil is torn. It says from top to bottom, it was torn, representing from God now to man is it is open. And it talks, scripture talks about in Hebrews, how Jesus was the forerunner that entered behind the veil of the most holy place. And so that to bring us into that holy place. And so when we ask Holy Spirit to come into our lives, we repent from sin, ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit inhabits a part of the human spirit, which I call the Holy of Holies. But within the Holy of Holies in the temple, there is a specific part of it, which is, right, the Ark of the Covenant. And what is in the Ark of the Covenant? There's specific things. There's a rod of Aaron. There is the Ark, uh, there is the uh, Ten Commandments, and there is the Golden Bowl, and the Golden Bowl contained manna. Jesus is that bread of life, the manna. 
And that represents, he's in that golden bowl. The golden bowl actually represents, again, the part of the human spirit. And that Ark of the Covenant is where the Holy Spirit resides. And so when we get born again, Holy Spirit comes there. Now that technically unlocks the access to God. And so God entered into that holy place as a forerunner, just like Moses was a forerunner to the Israelites. Now we can come in. The scripture talks about to come boldly before the throne of grace. That actually means to come into the presence of the father in the throne room. And so when I say I see Jesus, when I worship, when I uh, pray in tongues, my spirit man, it's always, it's technically always seated with Christ in heavenly places. However, it is when we worship and we praise God and we are tuned into the frequencies of heaven that is when the spirit man, the eyes of understanding begin to open and the spiritual senses begin to perceive God or heavenly realms. And so when I talk about seeing Jesus, it's in visions or encounters where my spirit is actually present with the Lord and he will spend time with me. He'll spend time with me in the secret place. And the secret place is the secret garden. That's what I nickname it is because it is a place where is actually in an inner realm, I call it. It can be an external realm in actually inside the Father or in heaven. But typically it can be inside the garden of your heart because your soul is a, a dimension and it's a realm. And Jesus will actually spend time with you there. And usually this is how you know it's the secret place. And I talk about this in my book. You'll usually know is because the first time you go there, Jesus will be sitting on a bench or he'll be on a swing. And he'll just say, come and sit with me, come and spend time with me. And so the secret place is where I first began to encounter the Lord and spend time with her. And in that place, the rivers of living water, which proceed from the father's throne, it actually comes out of the father's heart, but it, it looks like it comes from the side of the throne. When you look at the throne, that those waters actually go to every, every realm, heavenly realm, including the human spirit, because we're intimately connected with Christ. And so when we spend time with the Lord in deep prayer and in worship, and I'm talking about like you're living a sanctified life. You're not like, you know, in sin and stuff like that. But when you're living a sanctified life, meaning you're cleansing areas of your life, your mindset, your attitudes, your thoughts, you're taking captive your thoughts. You've had deliverance. You're going through inner healing of those soul wounds. And a lot of the healing actually happens in that secret garden. And so this is where we'll typically see Jesus, but he will bring you into the third heaven, which is where God, the angels, and the saints are. This is what we the scripture refers to three heavens, but the third heaven is the abode of actually God's kingdom. The second heaven is the spiritual realms of where warfare occurs. The kingdom of darkness um, operates typically. Um, and then there's the first heaven, which is technically the earth or like the physical tangible universe you know, the planets, probably a portion of like inner space, right? Um, but three different heavens uh, and the Lord will actually rapture you up just like he did all of the prophets and the saints uh, in Old Testament and New Testament. God would bring their spirit into heavenly realms and would uh, manifest himself to them. Uh, and that's what we refer to as seeing Jesus, basically. I don't know, Michelle, is there anything you want to add to that? I've had a... That's absolutely true. I've had other experiences with him when I know that he's standing beside me. Sometimes I can physically see him. Sometimes I'm not. A lot of times yeah. as I am actively in the process of rescuing children, mm -hmm. Jesus is with me. I'm going in. It's, it's usually in the spirit realm. He's taking me, but it's very yeah. different places. And he's, I can see him standing with me. Yes, me too. Yeah, and, that's how I usually see it. Yeah. But and I'll I'll be wide awake. There is yes, exactly. that, mm -hmm. that you were in um, like awake visions where yeah. you, you're you can even be with other people and as a group be seeing yeah. the same exact thing. Exactly. And Corporate then, vision. Yeah. There's dreams, there's visions, but yeah. seeing into the spiritual realm, the closer you get to the father's heart the more real seeing in the spiritual realm is almost more real in this physical realm. Exactly. 
And it's like the colors, the colors are just so beautiful. There's so many more colors. There's like an infinite amount of colors. And not only that, everything in this, in the heavenly realm, in like the third heaven, it's, it, it's actually worshiping God, everything, the light that emanates off of the plants and the flowers and the plants themselves are actually worshiping God. The grass, the way it sways, and there's it's a harmony and symphony of worship in the heavenly realms. And there are even animals and creatures, even like dino there's dinosaurs in the heavenly realms, because this is all God's creation. Um, and so there are all sorts of amazing things. And mm -hmm. like what I say too is I have a scripture on the bottom there. He brought me out into the spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me, Psalm 1819. Mm -hmm. The spacious place is another heavenly realm um, that uh, a lot of soul parts, soul wounds, when we rescue them, Jesus will bring them into that place. And it's uh, it's a heavenly realm. And I think it could be a, a, a facet of the inner realm of their heart, but it, I, it could also be in heaven. Um, it's a heavenly place. Yeah. And Michelle, can you share maybe a little bit about what your, what is your experience with the spacious place and these gardens and these heavenly well, places? something really powerful that I want to empower people with right now. Yeah. And if you could put that verse that talks about the living waters flow out of our bellies. Yes. Uh, let me as find I explain this. So one of the adventures that Jesus took me on one time, um, many times, often I'm in inside of one of the chambers of his hearts. There's yeah. realms on realms and universes inside of his heart. Yes, but exactly. Over time, he took me to the juncture where the four chambers of Papa God's heart met and there was a door and we went up to the door and of course it became huge as we got up there and Jesus said, I'm taking you into the secret place. So we he opened the door and we walked into the most luxurious garden that you could ever, ever imagine. The yeah. smell of the, the earth was rich, almost um, like you would think of Christmas time and, and cinnamon, but it wasn't cinnamon, but it just, it was intoxicating. And yeah. I looked at it and I said, is this the garden of Eden? He goes, no, baby. He goes, this is where the garden of Eden came from. Wow. And so we kept walking and there's amazing trees and fruits and there, there's not animals in, in here. It was, um, there's some butterflies maybe floating around, but this is, this was just, a beautiful garden and we're walking along and we come up this like a spring that's yeah. of this garden and out of the spring there's four tributaries of, a, yeah. of little creeks running out of okay. this and the water is here and there's the most beautiful jewels at the bottom of it wow i was just looking at it and i'm he knew I had questions and he goes, go ahead and ask. And yeah. I said, this isn't water, is it? And he goes, no, baby, it's not water. And he <laughs> goes, go ahead. I know you want to. So I reached my fingers down into it. I knelt down and I was like, this is not water. It had viscosity to me. And yeah. I said, this is not water. He goes, go ahead. He knew I wanted to taste it. I tasted it. I said, this yeah. isn't water. And I looked at him and I went, uh-uh. And he goes, go ahead and say it. I said, this is plasma, isn't it? And oh. Said, yes, this is my father's blood. Wow. That's incredible. So I want to go to where it says, From out of my belly flows living water. When you realize that that's Father God's blood, Wow. That's flowing out of your belly and you're surrounded by the blood of Jesus and you have the mind of Christ and you have Father God's plasma, his pure blood flowing out of your belly. What can stop you? There's wow. not a demon in hell that can stop you. When you realize the That's power, incredible. you've got the sound waves of God coming out of your mouth. You're surrounded by the blood of Jesus. You've got the mind of Christ and you've got God's, God's blood flowing out of your belly. What that is incredible. stop you? Wow. You know, the, the rivers of living water, 
it, it's it's so fascinating. So as as like when we become born again, we have access to it, but not everyone accesses it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when you understand, and when the Lord will actually as he begins to rapture you up into the heavenly realms and he begins to teach you the spirit of truth begins to tutor you in the spiritual realm, uh, complementary to the natural through reading your Bible, he will show you some amazing things. And I remember uh, one of the first times where I was in the throne room of God. And I mean, I I spent a lot of time there uh, worshiping and a lot of times from there, Uh, I have a tinkering kind of mind and I want to know like, well, how does this work? Or like, what's the name of that? Or, you know, kind of a thing. And so a lot of times from there, the Lord will bring me other places and teach me. But um, I remember one of the first times as I began to see the steps of the throne and it's a sapphire blue throne when I see it. And it is um, almost everything in heavens. It's like, or at least the crystals, they are translucent and they're like almost like prisms of light because the light of the father penetrates everything and it actually causes a cascade of light pillars. It causes rainbows around him. And also it's like an aurora borealis, but a billion times more incredible around the father um, that you just see in the heavenly skies above the father's throne. And anyway, so this one particular time I saw it was the, the rivers of living water that were proceeding out of the side of the father's throne. And... Um, and eventually me and Jesus would ride down that, uh, that particular area, almost like a slide. Mm-hmm. And the thing is in heaven, everything is fun. Everything's an adventure. Everything is oh, learning. We have the best slip and slide that goes into the river. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some of these rivers, they're like waterfalls. So it, it leads to mm-hmm. a, a waterfall. And then at the waterfalls, boom, you go down to another like r- stream of, or river or pool of water. And then you also have the sea of glass. And the reason why it's called these things is it literally looks at different times. It looks like crystals. And there was one time where the Lord just scooped it up into my hands and it was literally made of actually diamonds. And all of this comes out of the father. And Jesus is also intimately connected to that water because Jesus is also that water. Right. And so we would, there was times where the Lord would actually throw me into the, into the river or like um, the, the waters and it would just like seep into my spirit and I would feel like refreshed and just like so good. And a lot of times around these rivers, it's life giving. Mm-hmm. And what you have to understand is like, there's a lot of times in the heavenly realms, there's so much going on. You could be in uh, by a specific area and you might be alone with Jesus, but other times you will see people, saints, you'll see little kids, some of them who have gone too early, who have been aborted or maybe died. Um, and you will see them actually playing in the water with animals and like whales and like dinosaurs. Like I, literally it sounds, I know it sounds crazy, but the thing is with God, there's no limits. No. And with, with all of the amazing things, there's no, nothing can happen. There's no harm that can come to these little children. And some of them are like little toddlers that are playing and breathing. You don't have to breathe underwater. Like there's times where I've gone underwater and you just don't have to breathe. And so there's kids literally like little toddlers, little babies, even that are some of them with their family or angels, but they're riding on the backs of like sharks and whales that are like 30 feet long, Mm -hmm. or they're riding on like dinosaurs. And it's, it's such an incredible sight to see how, Jesus will intimately spend time with each and every one. He, the, like these kids will run up to him in like crowds of little children. They'll run up to him. They'll jump all over him. Some of them jumped on me. Yeah. yeah. And he will spend time with each and every one of them. And then they'll go off and play again. And it's, it's, it's such an amazing sight to behold. Um, and actually, Michelle, earlier you were talking about uh, David and Esther, how you had seen, and I've seen David and a couple of other uh, people. I think I've seen Paul, I've seen Moses and Mary, the mother of Jesus. But can you share about maybe some of the prophets of old or some of the saints that you have seen? Have you had any interaction with them or has Jesus introduced them to you? Yes. um, I have tons and tons of interactions with David. Um, That's Mm -hmm. a personal thing that, that we have um, because ongoing working with, 
um, ritual abuse. Yeah. But one time um, I was with a couple of other people and Jesus had invited us to come and view a war room in heaven. And we walked into this war room and yeah. I just had an encounter not too long before that where there had been um, witches used to astral project into my house. They don't anymore. Yeah. Um, anointing? Is it through the anointing um, of the home? No, what's going to it? It's, they, it's well known that they call me the staff breaker. But this one witch... I had astral projected in because her cat had astral projected in and um, there was a tussle. There was some things that happened. I'm not going to go into all the details right now. Yeah. But she turned out to be a Nephilim, but she was the high priestess of Baal. And oh. she ended up being no longer at, by the end of our encounter. Yeah. Wow. But where was I even going with that? Um, with David or the saints, the Lord had introduced you. So I had just had this encounter. I had taken her staff and broke it, which, and it turned out that was the original staff of the high priest of Baal. And I had broken it. Now I could um, see it in the spirit realm. I could feel it break across my knee, but I couldn't see it with my naked eyes, but I could see it in the spiritual. Yeah. This had just occurred. And I was invited into this world. I mean, you had just done a post about Bob Jones this week. Now, I wasn't real familiar with Bob Jones, except I knew the name, who it was. Yeah. And I understand what he looked like. And um, I recognized around the table, I had seen some of them before. I knew oh. all the apostles were there. Um, David was there. There was a lot of saints that have gone on. There was a lot of cloud of witnesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. people. And this old grizzled looking man and he had a like a, a tattered sweater like a well-worn sweater um, yeah and i was like that's you're wearing a sweater in heaven thinking to myself and and he walks up and he goes well missy boy looks like you sure pissed him this time <laughs> and i was like who are you and my <laughs> Yeah. She's in, um, in Portland, and I'm in Texas, and we're on the phone, but we're seeing the same thing. She goes, do you not know who that was? And I was like, no. She goes, that was Bob Jones. Wow. <laughs> now, now that I've learned about his demeanor and everything, yeah, that was exactly him. Yeah, but that's there, hilarious. This goes back to the cloud of witnesses. Yeah. There is an active cloud of witnesses. There's some people that I believe that just go to sleep until it's time for judgment. And then oh. levels of generals in the yeah. spiritual realm that go on to actively become part of the cloud of witnesses. So I have oh, interesting. Okay. had the pleasure of meeting many of them, working with, them. It's, and it's usually in, um, in court. Um, I've seen many of them come and they're assigned to be a judge for an SRA case that I'm presenting yeah. in court. a lot of times, many times, if I have a small child that I'm presenting in court, Esther shows up and she wraps the child, yeah. wraps her arms around him. And she goes, I will represent this child. Wow. She That's loves incredible. children. She has a mother's heart and she loves the children. That's incredible. Um, you know, it's like God, like children are so precious to God. And uh, someone had a question about, do the children grow up in heaven to adult age? Um, and you know what? When, when I have gone to different parts of the heavenly realms, often I'll see children playing little little kids. Um, that I'm like, this is strange because I would think that they would be at an, uh, an older age where they are. Because in heaven, you don't look old, but you don't necessarily would look young. Like, so if you lived a full life and you died, you would look in your prime kind of yeah. in heaven, but better. But when I started seeing all these kids, um, the Lord began to show me that these were kids and children who were, um, who died prematurely or who were aborted because they the Lord had some, yeah. 
Yeah, have- very sharp words about abortion. Yes. Yeah. And so in, in heaven, the little children will actually, they, they age very slowly. So for example, um, when their parents get to heaven, they will find some of them that they had their, their miscarriages and things that they didn't even know. They will find actually they were fruitful and they're actually filling heaven. They're mm-hmm. filling heaven with little children. Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, they do eventually age. Um, but they age quite slow and then eventually they come to an age of like a prime. And remember in heaven, guys, you actually continue to learn. Uh, you, you'll actually learn, you'll, you'll learn the infinite facets of God. Um, you'll have eternity to learn more and more deeper layers of God. And another thing is, is like, there are places, there's one place, there's several, but one place, um, not too long ago, I had a vision where uh, when I was in the heavenly realms, the Lord brought me to this place where it was like um, pillars. They were giant uh, crystal pillars that were the size of like a thousand feet. So think of like um, Superman's fortress. Like it looks like a crystal like that, but floating in the air, three pillars, massive. And I've been there twice and it's an ancient library. And those three pillars float in the air and they actually slowly rotate But on each of them, there are tons of scrolls and books. And one time we went there, this is way back. And the Lord um, was actually teaching us some stuff about that particular area. Um, Another time, just recently, when the Lord brought me there, I saw other saints and other people actually there. And they would open up these scrolls or books. And then they would actually be able to relive or encounter what it was like when certain things happened in history or biblical history. And so, for example, if you wanted to watch God create the entire universe and there's different places where God can actually show that to you. Um, the Lord has shown me uh, where he's stepped through. We've stepped through like a portal. That's what it looks like. And we have had what I call a flashback vision or encounter of him creating the universe. But in those books, I saw people open them up and then they were looking at different historical things that God had done or like in biblical creation or whatever history, biblical history. So there's very strange things in heaven where you will have eternity to have fun, to learn more uh, about God or to learn more about like different nature of different things. And then of course, fellowship and, um, you know, spend time with family or friends or biblical characters. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like, there was one time when I was walking in, um, I call it, it was like the way I would describe it. It was like, um, a grove, a beautiful grove of trees, very high trees, like palm trees almost, but on the tops of them, there was different fruits. And, um, I noticed in the distance on a chariot, there was David and he was sitting on there and he had a Royal robe. I think it was a purple robe if I recall correctly. And he had like a crown on his head. In heaven, there's actually crowns that you will receive. Um, there's specific ones in scripture it talks about, you know, crown of salvation, uh, things like that, the crown of life. But there's a couple of other ones uh, as well. And uh, David, he had a crown with like jewels on it. But I knew when I saw him, I knew it was him. And he, I think he waved to me. I can't remember with that vision. But he was teaching a bunch of little kids. There were like little toddlers or like, you know, a couple years old. They were all sitting around him. And he was sitting underneath these beautiful fruit trees, a grove of fruit trees. And he was basically teaching them and, uh, or telling like stories, uh, uh, of different things. So they were fellowshipping and in the trees, there were also, as we were walking me and Jesus, we were walking and there was, um, angels and other saints that were at the bottom of the trees. And these little kids, like little toddlers were climbing the trees And they were taking the fruit and they were throwing it down. And then afterwards, some of these little kids and babies would jump from the trees and some of them would land uh, in the angel's arms or, or, or in the saint's arms. Like maybe it was family member members, but other ones like little kids, they were jumping and then they would land on the ground and they would just like cushion. There, There was no way they could get hurt. And, but everything, it was so glorious to watch because everyone's laughing and enjoying themselves. And so there was just so much, um, so much like peace in, in the heavenly realms where you will encounter some of the wildest things. 
Um, and so, yes, kids, they are. So, for example, Sharon um, shared here, um, her son passed at seven years old. So in my book, there's a chapter where I touch base on this. Um, so in that chapter, I actually talk about the couple of visions that I've had, only a few of them, when I've seen the children and what the Lord has shown me about the kids. And so your son, he's well taken care of. Don't worry. Uh, he is um, having tons of fun. Uh, and there's other kids that actually they play with and other family members that will also um, be with them. And, uh, and of course, the angels and, and Jesus. But your son, he will likely, when you get to heaven, he will be roughly the same age that he was when he passed. And you'll actually be able to raise your son in the heavenly realms. But right now, he is probably in the heavenly nursery areas or the heavenly playgrounds. And um, it is just so beautiful, the things that, God has prepared for, for them and for us, of course. Um, but he's probably playing and he's having a blast. He's uh, well so, loved. Yes. So, so much fun there. Uh, and so have um, peace that knowing that God um, is when there's no, no potential, there's no potential lost in heaven. So on the earth, we think, oh, he didn't get to live a full life in heaven. He's going to get to learn. He's going to be able to develop his talents, his gifts in heaven, actually. Uh, and so there's no lost potential. Um, that's how amazing it is that God would love us so much. And he loves our children so much too. He's given them to us, of course. And for whatever reason, um, the Lord has taken him. Um, but uh, know that you will see him again. Uh, and he's well taken care of. And he's probably having a blast. He's probably riding dinosaurs. There's there is Dino Island uh, Park, which is uh, basically like a Jurassic Park, but it's actually in the clouds. When I had seen it, the Lord had brought me um, to it. It's like in the clouds, and there's all sorts of beautiful dinosaurs and uh, other creatures that we would blow our imagination. Like, you won't even believe. Uh, and he and other children, they were playing in that park. They were riding dinosaurs. And some of them would be riding also even on rainbows, riding on beautiful um, amusement park type of places in heaven. Uh, so there's all sorts of incredible places. Uh, and that's where the Lord um, has brought some of the children who have passed um, too early. So when, when you're talking about fascinating places in heaven, also, um, one time I was in um Yes, Ginger has seen that. We, uh, I was in like a forest and yeah. said, I want to introduce you to some very good friends. Yeah. And I was expecting some people. Yeah. And this is a very much Lord of the Rings type of thing that I'm about to tell you. Yeah. But all of a sudden, these huge towering oak trees started walking towards me. Wow. And he said, these are the oaks of righteousness and their roots go wow. deep and they're full of wisdom. Wow. And we talked and um, through the years, they have sometimes when I'm dealing with, with certain SRA things, yeah. they might give me um, a branch that they have themselves fashioned into an arrow or wow. to hold something. That's fascinating. They looked very much like the ants did in Lord of the Rings. Yes. But, I would... but very regal. That is incredible. You know, I was, because I was kind of thinking, are there, because I, and I haven't seen the, them yet. Um, but it's like, God has created different spirits that, and they're not angels, they're spirits that they don't fit the role of an angel or a human and they look like a beast. For example, like the, the living creatures, right? They look like some of them, like crazy animals with claws so and can have their own spirit. So when I talked about when Ginger and I, and we actually have a saved live because I, I saved it as a YouTube of when we were closing the Scott Travis portal in Houston from that yeah. horrible mm -hmm. that so people that were watching it, some of them that are, are very strong seers, they could hear the trees that were in behind us. We were able to get into the the park or the it's a facility. Yeah. Um, 
and stand right where behind where the stage had been, where where the rituals had gone on, where Scott yeah. Travis stood. And there's mm -hmm. a, a small park right now. And they said that we can hear the crying out, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. The the trees were like, because we people could see the sh the the demonic portals <clears throat> in the and they could see them closing down and their screams. Yes. And people said they clearly heard the trees saying, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending them. Wow. You know, it's incredible all of the things that God has created. And when you think this, uh, I, 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 I'm wondering, those um, spirits were probably like elemental spirits, kind of. Thought that Stoicians? Um, oh, how, what is that word? Stoicians? Oh, or Stoich, yeah, Stoician in the original. So, I, they're, yeah. they're met through our things that uh, have been working with um, ritual victims. I have met trees that are very, very evil and that serve the dark ones. Yes. And then I have met ones that are just trees, not met them, but trees. Yeah. But then met ones that actual have a living presence that they love Jesus and they love the yeah. Lord. Mm -hmm. um, when a group of us were at Morav Moravian Falls at Apple Tree Lodge um, yeah. years ago, there was a whole bunch of ladies. There was like 30 ladies and we were worshiping and we could look out the balcony and there was no breeze. And all of a sudden, the trees that were surrounding the um, the big lodge, yeah. we saw the limbs start waving like that. There was wow. no. They wow. were worshiping with us. That's that's the same building that Bob Jones and that group used to meet in and hold their retreats where they um, sequester themselves for like two weeks at a time. Oh. To, to see what the Lord was going to tell them. A group of yeah. would meet in the, the basement part of this lodge. And so there's a long history of um, the presence of the Lord being. Wow. That's amazing. You know, like I think back to all of the various, because at first I always thought like this before the supernatural visions and encounters, I always thought oh, it was just angels. And angels can only be male. And so I, there's so many preconceived mm -hmm. things that through religion and church has kind of taught that have actually been false. And so it was like, you know, the Holy Spirit will shatter a lot of those belief systems mm -hmm. um, because it's not truth. And the thing is, is that um, it's like it'll be in it. it it's so fascinating because, you, you know. It's like, for example, with the whole female feminine spirits, I used to think, okay, only male spirits. And then from there, it's like, late, I meet Lady Wisdom. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is a feminine spirit, a holy feminine spirit that God has created. And, you know, and then of course, in Proverbs, it all, the whole, all of Proverbs is talking about Lady uh, Wisdom, right, as a feminine spirit. And of course, yes. I understand poetry, the proper exegesis and everything like that. But the thing is, is that the Holy Spirit can have multiple layers of revelation uh, where we just think, oh, that's just a poetic style of poetry. Well, actually, it's not just poetic. And then there's things like, you know, the living creatures, because you have the angelic host and the host is like your military. It's the military branch of God's angels. But not all of the angelic hosts are actually angels like we would think humanoid form with wings and etc some of the angelic hosts are living creatures yes and the way that i would describe living creatures and it's a generic term basically saying like some of these things don't have a, a morphological body like we would think for example the uh, ophanum or the th um what we would call the throne angels which wheels within wheels Mm -hmm. And the eyes, they can take on different forms. So, for example, one of the first times that I would see them is they would appear as a chariot, like an ancient chariot, but they're lit, it's alive. And Jesus and I, or Jesus would ride on it, or the Father would ride on it, and then sometimes me and Jesus would ride on it. Other times, I've seen them appear as halos of light, but it's like a gyroscopic. Think of like mm -hmm. you know, when you see the sun. 
and you see um, some of the photos, astro astronomer photos of the um, the solar flares and the different anomalies with basically yeah. a flame of fire that basically is moving. And so if you picture um, a, a, a circular ring of fire, multiple rings like that, it was like that. And I could see it. But what was also interesting is there was many smaller, almost like uh, flames or like circular orbs that were gyrating within this that look like eyes to me. And then there was another time where I seen it, it looks like eyes, right? And mm -hmm. it basically wheels within wheels in a gyroscopic movement. So I've seen them in multiple forms. And each time in the spirit, like I, you sometimes certain things, you know, like, oh, I know that is a thrown angel, that is an ophanum. Mm -hmm. And there's other times where there have been angelic hosts. So when we're like, like, let's say we're shutting down a cosmic realm uh, from a bride of a former bride of Satan or a high satanic uh, mother of darkness, right? Who is a, a SRA survivor who was trained as a mother of darkness. You will at times shut down entire realms in the spirit. And some of these can be external realms, like actually on planets some of them are, or somewhere in the cosmos, right? In the spiritual realm, or it can be internal realms, right? Like the Archie uh, or the soul dimension or even the spirit dimension. And because there are fallen angels or cosmic level entities that are somehow entangled with these parts or dimensions, um, it is extremely, it's like high level things. And so what happens is God will send the angelic host or will ask through our prayer, Lord, would you release your angelic host? to shut down and lock down all these gateways and to arrest the, all the entities that are implicated. And then of course we will bring forth certain things within the courts of heaven as well. So different strategies, but what happens is in these scenarios, we'll actually see, and sometimes it's multiple people, a corporate vision, the patient yourself as a deliverance minister, and then a ministry partner who's backing you up in the spirit uh, on the, on the call where we will see living creatures that actually resemble Think of like uh, almost like a bear with a lion's head and then has like claws that are probably like, and these things are like 15 foot, but again, this is in the spirit so they can appear smaller or bigger. And so you'll see all sorts of entities that are actually from God. They're God, heavenly creatures that God has created, but they're for warfare. And then there's angels that, for example, um, there was this one time where the Lord introduced me to um Zerekiel, who was a, a who is I believe is an archangel, but he's a chief uh, angel over a tribe of angelic host. So he's under Michael the archangel, uh, who oversees the entire angelic host. But this particular um, uh, angel, he appeared with a, a troop of angels. Their armor was entire. Their entire bodies were made of like blades of armor. And I've tried to replicate this in some of my artwork, but basically entire body was like a blade of blades of armor that they were fashioned like pure blades and weapons. The entire body was a weapon and the wings were made of like metal. They look like entirely metal. And this angel, these angels could shoot basically blades out of their wings and they're, it's like, if you touch them, if a demon touched them, they would be shredded. Like you would, you would absolutely be shredded. And um, the Lord, at one point, he introduced me to another set of angels that look like that. And I think there are maybe a different group, but they're, they're, they look, their nature is similar. And the Lord said, um, or that, that particular archangel that was overseeing them said, these are like, we're the, the destroyer angels. That's their actual title. We're the destroyer angels. And then the Holy Spirit also in... Um, the story of Exodus, when you understand that this, the, he actually released the, like a spirit of death over, right. The Egyptians, but it says there's actually destroyers, like basically destroyers. And so those angels can be tasked from God to carry out special missions, right. Including destroying the kingdom of darkness. But there's all sorts of incredible uh, creations that God has, um, I guess, made um, that would just blow your mind. So. It's so confusing. What are the watchers? What are angels? What are fallen angels? They're all messengers of God. Some fell, some got pride in their heart, and then they got yeah. evil in their heart. 
and then they were cast out from God's presence and they became insane. Then you mm -hmm. have the ones that still watch. So we still have watchers that serve. Yeah. yeah. There's still those. There's all kinds of categories of angelic host. Yeah. And what and I've learned too is sons of God is just one small category of yeah. angelic being. There's so many different, yeah. different categories, different types. They serve different purposes. Um, I've seen some that do nothing, but, but they're like court couriers. They mess it. They take scrolls back and forth. Oh yes. Yes. The, I, I call them ministering spirits. Yes. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's all different kinds of things. There's, um, there oh, the is Aragorns. a category. Uh, this is something that I know that there's a lot of times people will get so hung up on this of the race of angels or the race of Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, God and Jesus and Holy Spirit, because it says in the beginning, they created everything. And then he said, let us, us meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit create man in our image and in our likeness. So God and Jesus and Holy Spirit embody every part of humanity, every race, every color, yeah. every, every nuance. They hold that. Yeah. And angels, I have seen angels up here. I've seen them. Asian looking. I've seen them black. Yeah. I've seen black. White. Yes. I've seen a black and Chinese female. I've seen them look like nothing like the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. They can appear how they the need to appear. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, God needs them to appear is how they're going to appear. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is for, for whatever reasons in their life would only accept an angel speaking to them or a vision if they were african-american then mm -hmm. that angel's going to appear to them mm -hmm. they're gonna that they're they're gonna have somebody that they relate to but there's no white angels there's no i mean there is there's there's not a all, all angels are not white all angels are not black all angels are not asian they're a mixed. mix because god created them variety yeah and with with variety yeah. and that's a whole nother that that could be a whole conversation yeah. itself of how Jesus appeared when Jesus wore his earth suit. He was a Middle East Jew. There's yeah. there's getting around that he wasn't white, he wasn't black, he yeah. was a Middle Jew. Yeah, he was caramel covered. He, he had a great tan. Yeah, um, he does. When I've seen him, yeah, um, our visions we've talked about this before of. He looks very similar. He had yes. about shoulder length, dark brown, wavy hair. Sometimes I see him with green eyes. I've seen him with flames in his eyes. I see him with blue yeah. eyes. Up and I see him with green eyes. And brown. Yeah, exactly. But the, his eyes can change. I've seen exactly, yeah. literal fire shooting out of his eyes. Mm -hmm. Beams of light. Oh, it's. And lightning as well. That's because that was scary. The enemy who was, it, he was following an S victim home that had been at my house and following them behind. He was on his horse following them and there was flames yeah. coming out of his, his hair, you know, see the flames coming from his eyes. Those yeah. demons were trying to cause them to wreck or whatever, you know, on the way home. You would think they, I mean, it was scary. You'd think they'd learn their lesson, but they don't because they're, they're insane. Um, yep. Jesus can appear how he needs to appear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was on this earth, it is what it is. He was, he was yeah. a Jew. It just is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when I see him like in the spirit, in visions um, and encounters in the heavenly realms, I'll see him. Uh, he has, a, he, he's very lean, muscular, like lean yeah. muscular, because I guess when he was a, as a carpenter, but he's also like six foot something, maybe he's quite tall. Um, and there's typically, I've seen them both with wavy, wavy and curly hair, both. Yes. I've seen them both times. Um, and a pretty clean cut, uh, beard. 
uh, and tanned, like tanned Middle Eastern type of skin. And the most of the time when I would see him, it was with brown eyes. Then um, I saw him in like deliverance when uh, he was healing other people, uh, soul parts. I was like, wait, he has blue eyes? And then sometimes it would be green eyes. So then I was kind of confused because I was like, oh, that's a contradiction, right? And then I asked uh, my ministry partners and I was like, hey, when you see Jesus, what color do you see him? And they're like, well, I've seen him with blue eyes, with brown eyes, with green eyes. And it's usually those three. And then, of course, his glory eyes. I call it the glorified yeah. eyes. But and I was like, OK, whatever. So I said, OK, uh, I was like, Holy Spirit, how come Jesus has different colored eyes? And then the next vision that I had uh, when the Lord had uh, uh, taken me up. I was like, I was like, why do you have different color eyes sometimes? And then he showed me like his, oh, he has rainbow colored eyes as well. Like I've seen it with rainbow color, like prisms. Uh, it's hard to describe, but um, he shared, he said, when I spoke um, the world in, into existence uh, and he was actually showing me, he was showing me creation mm -hmm. and he, 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 he shared how all of the light Every single color or shade of light, hue of light, proceeded out of me. And so every color is within me. And that's why I sometimes appear with various color eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow. Like, and when, like, when Jesus teaches you or shows you certain things, you don't just hear it. Because usually it's not the mouth moving. You, you understand and you feel his emotions yes. when he teaches you or talks to you. And so it, it, it's a whole other dimension of knowing when he um, communicates, right? So, but yeah, the, the whole kind of various color eyes, it's because all of this is a part of Christ. It all proceeds out of him. So think back to what I said earlier, what he showed me, that color is a sound wave. Yes. Mm -hmm. Goes back to that R-U-A-C-H. He embodies every color because that is the sound waves of creation. Yes, yes. Fascinating. You know, it's like how much like God loves us, um, how much he sacrificed, how much he was tortured. Um, can you share what the Lord has um, revealed to you in the heavenly realms and through visions of his suffering and some of the things like, for example, like the signature of his blood on us and what, like, what does that mean? His, like us being marked and, and his blood and everything he did for us. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of his suffering, but the blood is very important because what he's shown me, with, especially working with ritual victims or in deliverance, because of the initial shedding of blood, when Cain killed Abel, that, mm -hmm. that blood was shed and, and saturated the earth. Yeah. So it took his blood to overcome that. This is why any ritual, anything that the enemy does is going to involve blood mm -hmm. because that is the most powerful thing. Yeah. And keep forgetting that the power in Jesus blood now. Yeah. And the blood is not just a symbol. The mm -hmm. blood saturates us. It's cons we, we need to ask to take communion to let it saturate us. Mm -hmm. But to remember the power. Because when Jesus died at that moment and the soldier pierced his side and the blood and the plasma separated. And it wasn't a lot of blood that hit the earth. But it was enough. It's when that blood touched the earth that had been tainted by the original blood hitting the earth. That's when the earth shook. That's yeah. when the veil was torn. That's when the dead mm. rose from the grave is the power of his blood. And it's his DNA. Mm -hmm. it goes back to what I said about the DNA in the water bottles. Um depending on the situation and this is a whole nother thing sometimes he has me spit on um mm -hmm. with especially dealing with ritual victims because yeah. break a um a demonic you can't see it in the natural but a demonic tattoo a demonic wedding ring yeah and he's 
And I was like, I'm not, I, I argued with him for 30 minutes one time. I said, I'm not spitting on him. <laughs> and back and forth and back and forth. And he, finally he said, my DNA is in you because yeah. our blood has mingled together. Yeah. He said, when you do that, you carry my DNA in your spit. You carry my mm. DNA in your blood. Yeah. In, your bodily fluids there's my dna and so we forget the power of the blood of jesus for cleansing the land for cleansing ourselves for taking community and yeah. cleansing all of all the realms and atmospheres inside of us yeah because we're human we we do dumb things throughout the day sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes and you know we have to <laughs> clean those those realms and atmospheres up inside of us. Yeah. His blood is, it, it's, it, think of it not just as a liquid, but think of it as looking at under, at it under a microscope and down to the very DNA strands. Mm -hmm. So when you're not looking at it as just, there's some, uh, you know, some red fluid. Yeah. You know, to look at it, the fact of, if you were looking at it for a microscope, and it goes into the very DNA strands that those DNA strands penetrate like nothing else can. And that's mm. when the word of God penetrates. It penetrates into your bone and your marrow. Wow. So it's his DNA is in his blood. It's not there's a cup of blood that because that's people say, oh, that's morbid. No, his DNA that that. Yeah. Carries, yeah, and you know, it brought up that verse in John 9, 6 there on the bottom uh, when Jesus spit, made, took some mud and rubbed it in the blind man's eyes, right? And it's like prophetic. It's like Adam is made from the dust of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's taking his DNA now, mixing it with that, and then, right? So I've had times where one of, somebody I was working with had a demonic wedding ring on that you can't see it in your natural eyes. I could see it in the spiritual yeah. And I could see like a black ring that was um, spirit spells in them. Yeah. And he would have me spit on that and then oh, and remove it and move it off and hand it to him so he could dispose of it. Interesting. I, I've encountered a lot of spiritual jewelry, um, usually related to spirit spouse. And um, one of the other ones, which I refer to as a queen ruler. Uh, and that is a part of a person that has been programmed by the kingdom of darkness. Again, this is SRA uh, that has been uh, programmed through mm -hmm. uh, demonic realms to be a queen tethered to Lucifer or a fallen entity. Mm -hmm. uh, and that part actually rules in an actual realm. Mm -hmm. And this particular realm could be like anything. There's really wild stuff and there will be physical uh, or spiritual jewelry that can actually be physically felt on the person, but it's because they're, they're, they're in a covenant, a marriage covenant with this fallen angel or cosmic level entity that um, all of this has to be renounced and removed. So, I mean, we can pray when I'm doing it, it's virtual most of the time through zoom deliverance. And so we will pray divorce both the entity, the covenants and all of the legal documents. We'll ask the Lord to bring it all up. Uh, and everything to be exposed under the light of the Father that will penetrate infinitely deep, infinitely wide, uh, every covenant, including all spirit spouse, like uh, children. Mm -hmm. So there's sometimes offspring in the spirit um, that have been uh, basically created. Uh, and so you have to get all of that in order to successfully break this uh, covenant with the spirit spouse. And so a lot of times they can feel these things being taken off by Jesus Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they felt it for years. They felt this um, jewelry or like things like binding them. Yeah, uh, so it's like really strange, right? It's a picture of what's like the, the natural realm is only a picture of the, uh, of the, the spirit, right? Like it's crazy. It, it, it really is. And we think it's crazy, but that's more real than our, because this physical world is temporary. And mm -hmm. this realm yeah. is infinite. Um, a lot of times when I'm taking someone for a divorce, I don't just take them to the regular courts of heaven. I ask for that to be done at the foot of the throne because I don't want 
um, any demonic en- any demonic entities interfering in that at yeah. all. And yeah. then God Himself decrees a divorce. Oh, okay, yeah. And many times I've had him then bring Jesus up and he puts the person's hand in Jesus' hand and he puts his hand over that. And he says, I decree you and my son are married now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And he said, no one, no one mm-hmm. can do that. Yeah. What I say overrules or overthrows anything that he demands mm. done. Yeah. Belinda asks, what is the ring around the neck? I mean, it could be all sorts of jewelry or different types of things. Uh, But if it's a noose, maybe sometimes people in deliverance, they've felt for years or months nooses around their neck of being strangled by uh, demons. Uh, And so, you know, whatever type of devices uh, that we, we... there's different wording we can use to just basically, in plain English, whatever devices or tracking devices, uh, jewelry, inheritance, we sever it, we break it, we stamp it with the blood, nail it to the cross. Um, would it be completely removed, Lord Jesus, uh, and taken and destroyed in by the fires of the Holy Spirit, etc.? We plead the blood of Jesus, right? And a lot of times um, that is effective in removing these different devices and things that the kingdom of darkness can put on people. And we've talked about doing this and we do, we need to do one just on deliverance one time. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. So many people misunderstand actually what deliverance is. There's so many misconceptions in the church. They think you got to shout at someone and throw a Bible at them. Mm -mm. Yeah. Bible, all these things, but that the band can also be the reason why in slavery, they put the band around the neck. Mm, Yes. Times it is a, means of ownership Mm. attached by a ley line yep Mm -hmm. oven yeah that's monitoring that person um so it can be all those things that you said and that's another thing it can be it is a slave ring ownership around Mm -hmm. Mm there yeah tethered tethered to um a region of captivity even um or somewhere someplace in the land ley lines and things like that these are like energy yeah, um, exactly. centers within the earth that are uh, intersecting uh right different places in the earth and that's where also this gets difficult too is because the kingdom of darkness uh including uh some of the elites will use ley lines right uh mm-hmm. to channel essentially it could be anything it could be finances it could be things and also a lot of times there's demonic activity that could occur in the land as a result of wherever these uh, kind of um, ley lines are intersecting. And so sometimes um, it depends. There could be ways we need to cleanse the land or other ways we need to shield and ask the Lord to do different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but someone says, is there marriage in heaven? Are you married to your husband on earth in heaven? What about those who have had multiple marriages? Uh, Michelle, do you want to answer that one? Scripture's pretty clear about that. We are spirit people there isn't marriage like here we um we all worship god yeah entity that doesn't mean we don't have love for people up there Mm -hmm. um because we will love differently it's a pure love yes um marriage we're all married to christ yeah marriages on earth part of that is centered into um all the things that come with marriage, the bodily things. And in heaven, there isn't that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's yeah. the earth suit things that are associated. Yeah. Yeah. It is pure love and it is centered upon all of us being, yes, all of us being married to Jesus because in heaven, we will all be the bride of Christ. So yeah. we can't be the bride of Christ and still be married to a spouse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, for those that have had multiple marriages, it's if um, let's hope that that they all get to go to heaven. Yeah, and there will be healing, and there won't be any animosity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it will be a coming together of let's all go worship Jesus today. Yeah. This is gonna be so awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I think like, you know, from what I've seen and, and what the Lord has shown me is like in the mansions, um, there's the areas, the beautiful, it, it looks almost like a city, but um, by the mansions, there are, the houses are incredible, but there are people who fa families and, you know, part uh, people who are married in the earth, you will actually, some people, if you want to, you can live beside your, your who you were married to in the earth. And it's like, like me and Jeannie, we love each other so much that I'm like, yo, we're going to be living on the same block or we can actually live in the same place because we love each other so much, but it's, it's such a pure love. Um, and so I think in heaven, in the mansions, like you will literally have families and friends over. You can have as many people as you want over and have feasts mm -hmm. and, and do things together. If you want to go fishing, if you want to, you know, whatever it is, um, there's so much to do. There's so much fun. Um, and there's so much pure fellowship that it's like, we'll be sharing amazing stories of what God did in our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. And there won't be any of the negative things, any of the sadness or any of that. Um, and it's just, it's a part of the, the nature in heaven is just different from the earth. Right. Uh, and remember marriage is a picture of our covenant with Christ. Right. And so the things in the earth is just a mirror of that in the spiritual realm. Yes. So, so hopefully that answers that. Someone else asks, do you know, once you are in heaven, if some of your family does not make it there, I don't believe you will. No, you won't. And Jesus has made that clear to me. Yeah. You're going to have, there is no sorrow because if he showed you family members that didn't make it, have sorrow and there is sorrow in heaven. Yeah. You just, you won't even be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what, what I, what I believe as well. <laughs> same awareness as we are here like i wonder what sally down the street's doing i wonder what what cousin betsy's doing or it's, you know oh she's is she doing that again no there's there's not any of that it's going to be pure pure love and pure worship the focus on the bride on the bridegroom mm -hmm. and there will be any thought of bad things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it yeah. will be, it's, uh, it's not like they're not exactly, um, but we won't remember, you won't be aware that they didn't make it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, like spending time with the Lord in like heavenly realms, it's just uh, like, there's times where in the earth, like there's still things I love and enjoy in like the natural realm, my family, you know, my wife. Um, but like once you spend time in the spirit with the Lord and see all that there is, it's like it actually kind of makes the like the real world seem so pale in comparison it's, that it's just like this world is pale petty compared yeah. to what's yeah. going to what it's going to be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're going to be busy we're yeah. um, a, a bunch of angels floating around on a cloud there's going to be things to do because mm -hmm. it's the old world will pass away for the new earth the new yeah. world and it's not going to be an earth like this but there will still be things to do mm -hmm. yeah you know when i was a kid i thought heaven is going to be a really boring place if we spend their eternity and it was weird. Like I was a, always like a tinker. I always used to think of like weird things as like, as a, as a kid. And I was like, heaven's going to be boring and we're going to have to spend eternity there. And so I'd have all these really bombarding thoughts. Uh, and I mean, some of them may have been d demonic, but it was like, um, it was like understanding it's like, that heaven is going to be so much fun when you worship the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, when you, if you want to learn new things, if you want to step into the father and walk and, and know the father, the deeper levels, and also our pets, our pets are going to be there because mm -hmm. that, which we love, like the things that we love, God wants to bring them to heaven. And so know that you actually, our pets will actually be in heaven as well. Yeah. And they yeah. have, they actually have a spirit as well. The Ruach is, is within in them. Pets are very aware of the spiritual realm. Yes. Bitsy, who was just crawling up on me, she is very aware 
when there is something demonic trying to get into the house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes she'll run to me just shaking because oh, maybe yeah. she's outside and oh. see something, and she runs in and just gets up on me and just shaking. And then there's other times that she'll be looking out the front window on her chair and just, yeah. and she, you know, she's a tiny little thing. He sees yeah. that. Um, yes. They're mm-hmm. very aware of the spiritual. Yeah. Life. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Sharon asks, I want to have more encounters in heaven with Jesus, Father and Holy Spirit. What are some of the things that you have found in your journey um, to spend time with God and have supernatural encounters because it's part of our inheritance, but what yes. are some of the things that you've done that you found help that? When I first was starting to step into really seeing in the spiritual realm, and this is, this yeah. has been 10 years ago um, and yeah. that I really focused on it and started having encounters I wanted badly to see in the spiritual realm. Well, one of the things that Jesus led me to was listening to Graham Cook's, um, he said, I'm a warrior. I think it is. Um, I can post that in comments later. Um, and it's, it's like a, a 30 minute soaking, but it's, he's speaking to your spirit to rise up and, yeah. and him speaking to your spirit to rise up. Oh, uh, all mm. these days. So yeah. telling your spirit to rise up. And then as you start worshiping with that, it's worship and intense worship. Yes. In, in a tent, but which you can, in a tent and, but you really have to spend quality time mm-hmm. worshiping. And, yes. Um, I love Rick Pino's, his worship. One, one time, um, I was, I had gone to, because he lives only an hour from here. So oh. it's easier to, you know, go to things that, that he has, but mm-hmm. like a teaching class that he had. And he was talking about getting into the spirit realm and really getting into that, that intense secret place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can't remember the name. It's something warrior, but we had all been worshiping and he goes, stop. So he goes, no, God's speaking to me. And he says, we're going to do one thing mm-hmm. because he'd been singing the song he has of, of you are holy, but he, which is a beautiful song. And it's all, it's singing to him. He goes, he goes, we're going to switch this up. And he goes, we're going to say one word mm-hmm. and it was just holy. Oh. Holy for 25 minutes. Wow. We were singing holy. Mm. see the angels in the room just worshiping the room was couldn't see the room for the angels wow and he was just crying out holy 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 holy, holy. yes and it's like we talked earlier about the atmosphere. um it shifted so much there was not one person that could stand the mm. atmosphere was tangibly held and the holiness permeated there there was no space you couldn't see the ceiling you couldn't see the walls you couldn't see the walkways because of so many angels that were in there not not everybody could see them but the closer you papa's heart of being in that in intimate place with him mm-hmm. and asking him i want to see your heart and you worship and you walk in with the intent I'm going to encounter Holy Spirit today. I'm mm-hmm. going to encounter Jesus today. I'm going to encounter Father God today. And it's purposeful intent to say, I'm going to have an encounter with the Lord today. Yeah. And you focus on having that encounter with him. Mm-hmm. Focus on it by not focusing on you. So many songs on like, and I'm not dissing Caleb really or any of those stations. But though they mostly play feel good songs, songs to make you feel better about you. I'm talking mm-hmm. about worship. Yes. Yeah. Worship of the Father. Julie Meyer. Um, Julie Myers is it, go to Spotify and listen to her music. Okay. And the thing that she does is worship of the Father. Mm-hmm. One of the 
yeah. she has is a a prayer that Heidi she was at a um, she does a lot of conferences, and Heidi Baker was, and she's the worship leader at a lot. And Heidi Baker was going to be speaking, and she was going to start with a prayer. And Jesus said, "Get your note paper out." Or he said, like, and I see he goes, "I want you to write her prayer down." And he said, "You're going to turn the prayer into a song." Mm. And that song is called "I Will Go Anywhere." Mm -hmm. Want to really not just get in His presence. But surrender yourself fully to him. Yes. It's singing I Baker's prayer of I will go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I will do anything. Mm -hmm. Worship. And then remind him, I will go anywhere that you tell me to do. And then worship. Yeah. Being intentional. It's mm -hmm. what do you have? What experiences have you had? Um, so, I mean, I uh, what I teach is like kind of my journey of how I began to see visions because I wanted it for so long, for, for like 15 years. I sought the Lord on it um, after being born again because when I came in, I came in quite radically. Um, and so I immediately, I actually started watching and searching um, and I found uh sid roth it's supernatural so i'd watch that like every like every new episode i'd watch and some of the old ones even and everyone on that show would be like yeah you can encounter like god in like visions and all these other things and dreams and um it's for everyone you can pray in tongues you can you know speak in tongues etc and so i was searching and i would put up my hands toward the tv as they were praying and then the prayer would come and then i'd be like okay nothing's happening and so for years, year after year, it happened where I would kind of be like, I've been seeking for so long. You kind of sometimes get a little numb, right? Uh, and just like, oh, maybe I'm not special, you know? And so there's that false programming, not understanding that this is actually my inheritance as a believer in Christ and that he's completed the, the payment for it all. It is finished. And so um, then, um, you know, just over the years going through sanctification and different things. And so one day i was driving in the states because i'm canadian i'm outside of toronto and so i was driving in the states with Jeannie. she was going to a public speaking event and so i was going to go drop her or we were like just driving there to the hotel or the airbnb actually and what happened was um i was worshiping the lord and i, I think i was listening to jenny weaver's uh worship one of her her albums back then before she was like famous or more popular but i was listening to her and i was worshiping the lord and um as i was worshiping driving i saw seven eagles flying over like um you know within a short period of time and also i was like wow like god like you know whatever and i was just worshiping so i was in the i was in that in that frequency of the heavenly realms in that sense and then all of a sudden i started praying in tongues um while driving and so for 15 years or so I had searched and finally received the baptism of the Holy spirit. So for the next like three days, I prayed in tongues nonstop and I was working remotely from the hotel. Uh, Jeannie would go, uh, from the Airbnb and Jeannie would go to her public speaking event stuff. And, um, I would just pray in tongues cause I'm just like, uh, typing in computer, right? I don't need to talk to anyone on the phone or anything. And so I was just praying in tongues the entire time. And basically, uh, from there, when I got back to Toronto, outside of Toronto, I was like telling my friend who already walked in some of this stuff. So to him, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, praying in tongues is normal. Um, and so we began to gather uh, regularly, like five, six, seven days a week at my house because he was a, he was really close by. And um, we would just after dinner, we would lie on the couch and listen to uh, praise and worship music. And then I would switch it to just instrumental Christian meditation or Christian me uh, worship uh, instrumental music on like Spotify. You can search it up. There's a ton of different ones. One of my favorite ones is actually by a group called Salt of the Salt or something. Salt of the Salt, I think it's called. And so I would we would listen to that afterward and we'd just worship and say, Lord, we praise your mighty name. We lift you higher. You are so holy. You are so good to us. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. So we would do this for hours. Mm -hmm. But 
soon what would happen as we'd pray in tongues and, and worship the Lord like this. Um, and so it was back then it was with our eyes closed because we were like doing it for hours, lying down on the floor or like on our knees worshiping uh, prostrate. And then that's when I first began to see visions. He had already, he could already see visions, but he, it was like a once in a while thing. But because we fostered this presence of the Holy Spirit saying like every time I'll say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here into my living room. We welcome you. Come Holy Spirit, come. And so we would do this. And so that's when I would see pictures. And as I would begin to see pictures, words, we would ask like, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to tell us? What does this mean? Okay, are you showing this because you want us to pray over what this demonic entity is doing or these witches that are operating in our in our neighborhood or region? And so we would tr we would basically speak to the Holy Spirit and he would show us things. And then it would become a full out cinematic encounters where he would actually our, our spirits would be basically by the power of the Holy Spirit. We would be in the spiritual realm. He would show us in this region, your neighborhood, there's a coven. There are things over your government. There are curses that have been placed over the government, the parliament that are inhibiting the flow of God's church. And so God would then have us like pray and stuff like that. So the early days was actually a lot of warfare where we would be like, okay, Holy Spirit, are you sure you want us to pray against this entity? Because you don't just want to start calling down fallen principalities. You no. can really be hurt and yes. cause a lot of destruction in your life. And um, so I, he would show we'll us. Go. Yeah. But and so he would. I hate to interrupt you, but I'm going to yeah. have to in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Just, um, just... Because yeah. I have a house full and okay. my husband's going to want to go to bed here pretty yeah. soon. No problem. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. But it was really the Holy Spirit would just kind of lead into whatever he wanted to do. Um, but... Michelle, is there any final things that you want to share or maybe, and then maybe if you want to end in prayer uh, over those that are on this call. Oh goodness. I can't, if I get, if I get started on something else, we'll want to, <laughs> um, we're definitely going to have to do this again. Yeah, for sure. Um, let people know in advance. The good thing is this is recorded so people can go back and, and rewatch it. They can share it. But what I just speak over people right now, um, this is a whole nother subject then of, of understanding what decreeing and declaring is. Yeah. Um, but I decree over everybody mm -hmm. and declare using scripture mm -hmm. that you will encounter with mm -hmm. holy and anointed one Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That the layers of what I call black goo that the enemy has built up on people is being broken down and fractured off of them. Fire that the penetration of the blood of Jesus to the hardened places mm. of their realms and atmospheres, the hardened mm. places that have been built around their heart by the enemy that has made it seem like it's difficult to reach mm. the holiness place with Jesus. That's a lie of the, and I, dec I decree and declare that the power of the Lord Jesus, the power of the fire from the blue braziers, though that fire from the throne of God that surrounds him, that, that comes down in like fireballs into yes, everybody, Lord. that is breaking those shells of hardness, that is keeping them from seeing what Jesus wants them to see. Mm. Yes, Jesus, Lord. Ask that you give everybody that's listening and watching dreams and visions. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That you show them how much you love them. That the places, the people that have had promises made over them to the enemy that I declare and decree over them that what Jesus decreed in court, that every contract written, verbal, a blood contract that was made over any person watching right now that is being called null and void due to the insanity. We bring that to court right now. Every person that's listening and watching, we ask the court case be opened for them. I saw and 
the enemy is made to remember that in their insanity, that they may claim ownership over something or someone, but their insanity allows it to not stand. And we bring that for every single person watching that every area of life where the enemy says and claims that they have a hold of that person that that was illegally done because of their insanity mm -hmm. and we want the breakthrough from jesus come to them Lord. right now and that the penetration of the blood of jesus permeates in and that in their garden any place that the enemy planted weeds we speak to the righteous trees to grow in their garden that yes, the Lord. go deep. We yes, speak to the places where the river of life that's supposed to flow out of them, where there has been debris built up and that is hindering that water and blocking it up, just like a stream that has dried up, but the, and the debris has built up and there's a mound of, of all kinds of things that is keeping that water backfill. We ask the Holy Spirit fire to come down on that debris right now and burn it up to a crisp. And that Holy Spirit come in. Let that water push. From Isaiah 57, one of the things, and this is part of decreeing and declaring. So declaring is speaking scripture. So many people say this scripture that when the enemy comes in like a flood, but what it actually says because of the Hebrew is when the enemy comes in like a flood, God comes rushing in. Mm. Break it. This is why I love um, Brian's wording in the Passion Translation because he breaks it down for, further. Mm. Because Jesus is the rushing, roaring river. So when you say it, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Jesus comes in like a rushing, roaring river pushed on by his father's breath. Mm, That's yes. powerful. So mm. I speak that into every person right now. I do that scripture for them that in every area of your life, that right now I want you to ask Jesus to mm. come like a rushing, roaring river pushed on by his father. That is breaking down every demonic dam mm -hmm. and every demonic um, structure that is keeping you from moving forward. Let that rushing, roaring river, which is Jesus, Lord. by his own father's breath. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in the demonic realm that can stop that rushing, roaring river. So I speak that into everybody Jesus. right now, that every area of your life that's stale and stagnant, where the backwater has been built up because that, that river inside of you has been captured by rushing, Jesus. that that stale, stagnant water right now is being infilled by the roaring rushing river and that tonight you will be filled with dreams and visions yes and jesus on a realm but from mm. god's own realm that you will you will get instructions that you will get witty ideas that you will get downloads for books that you will get delivered even yes. after Sleep and rest that God, if, if you ask him, use me even while I'm sleeping, God, and he will use you. Yes, Lord. He will have kingdom purposes for you. And that each of you tonight are going to start stepping even further into your identity as a bride of Christ. And a bride is not male or female, it is just the bride. And that you all start stepping into that into a fullness that you've never seen before mm -hmm. that's lord thank you jesus lord we just speak uh heavenly protection uh heavenly equations and force fields ensuring that all evil assaults 
are completely interrupted and destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. We also booby trap all of the evil assignments taken out against us and those on this call with spiritual weapons of mass destruction, bringing severe pain and ruin to agents of darkness engaging in evil assignments against us. Lord, whatever has been in a state of misuse in everyone's lives here on this call, family line, finances be resurrected in the mighty name of Jesus with the voice and the authority of Jesus Christ that raised Lazarus from the dead. Would it move over the lives of those on this call to bring resurrection power, resurrection in their life, Lord Jesus? Yes. Holy Spirit, fill every empty room in their body, their soul, spirit, and in their homes. Would you bring complete healing, restoration, and life, Lord God? And would the rivers of living water be released out into their lives to overflow in every area? And we ask for the winds of refreshing to move forth and the rains of harvest and provision to be released in their lives. We speak, Lord God, into everyone's life right now that is hearing the sound of my voice and even in the replay that your will would be done in their lives, Lord God, and that your Holy Spirit would, ab would abide in them and throughout their life, Lord God, and that you would speak to them and that you would open the eyes of the Spirit, the eyes of understanding, and that they would encounter you in heavenly realms as they look for your eyes, as they look for your face when they go to sleep tonight or when they go into prayer, and that they would have supernatural encounters with you. And we claim this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, Michelle, thanks so much uh, for jumping on. Uh, it was a great, great uh, uh, um, live stream. And uh, we'll have to do it again. Yes. So everybody take care. Blessings. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on. I'll see you.